Hello everyone, and welcome back to the latest installment of the Star Trek Adventures Cerberus Station. Those of you who are quite astute at looking at video overlays will notice that there is a significant number of people in the Discord uh, chat. That's because this is a very special game where we are crossing over, not between uh, games that I run, but between GMs, uh, myself and friend and fellow GM, ELH and his group, the Dark Royal players, who will be showing up to cause mischief, mayhem, adventure, and there might be some explosions. We'll find out. So, without any further ado, I believe that Captain Crawford has the Captain's Log. That I do. Alright. Captain's Log, Stardate 81393.5. Our work on the Graviton Catapult has been going ex eh, extremely well. Most of the workers on the station have been moved to that until the project is completed. Luckily, with Commander Keevan and Chief Petty Officer Nia in charge of station maintenance and repair, I'm not too worried about running with a skeleton crew. In other news, Commander Dolrum suge has suggested that Commander Jail become certified in Starship Command. I thought Jail shouldn't really be given the chance to do so, but my exo brought up some good points and he has been given the lunette for a 48-hour tour of duty, which he should be back from shortly. After our last mission, we found that our mission was interfered with by the USS Black Shield, a ship that was under the command of Captain Sengel, commanding officer of the USS Nighthawk. After Commander Dolrum made the report, Admiral Zier was rightfully furious at this and has made a report to Admiral Riker about the matter. While I've appreciated the work that Captain Sengral and his officers have put in here in the Expanse, this could hold serious punishment for Starfleet Intelligence's operations in the area, and rightfully so. End log. Very well. So it has been roughly a week's time since the USS Lunette has come back ferrying a Borg cube and several uh, spheres full of new interlink uh, refugees. Um, without much uh, ado, the Borg's ships all were dismantled and reintegrated into ailing portions of the Transwarp Hub. So, no, you don't have a Borg cube waiting to uh, pop out to assist you at, at any moment. Don't ask. <laughs> um, relationships between you and the Interlink are as well as can be expected. Naturally, there's a little bit of undercurrent of unease amongst some of the, uh, either the aging or the lower ranks officers, but morale is as can be expected. You're all Starfleet officers after all. We are going to cut to the bridge, or to the operations center. And it's been a few quiet days. We're just going to cut straight to the story where Lieutenant Dusk, you pick up in, it looks like the signature of the Dark Royal, but that's impossible. It's gone through several modifications, but it's coming through. Commander? Yes? Were we expecting the Dark Royal to upgrade itself? That information hasn't been set down, at least that I have heard. Well, either they've gone ahead and done some significant modifications, or we're dealing with not the Dark Royal, but they are approaching us rapidly, sir. Let's go to Yellow Alert. Captain to the bridge. And I'll obviously just kind of step out of my office. Sir, the Dark Royal seems to be on an approach, but it's not matching what we have on the record for the Dark Royal. Interesting. Um, is it in view that we could put it on screen, Lieutenant? Uh, one moment, sir. And uh, appearing on the view screen is a much updated uh, Dark Royal. I'm going to let uh, Demos take this one, or I guess Dominus take this one. So, 
coming through the trans warp hub is a big metallic natromium skull face is what you guys see as it starts breaching through um it starts trailing out uh it's definitely a lot different from when it was first seen uh multiple cannons are set along its uh hull um the natronium seems to have been re-altered to look more intimidating and weaved into the uh, whole structure of the ship. Um, the eyes glow red because that's where you're picking up the rail guns. And uh, it's not armed or anything like that there, but it's it's trailing on in, and it is looking a little bit smoky too. Oh. And yeah, it's a um. um, multitude of weapons. Um, like the cannons on them are able to rotate fully around the ship. Sure. Um, upon seeing the ship on the view screen, uh, Lieutenant Darval, open hailing frequencies. Aye, sir. Opening hailing frequencies. This is Captain Crawford of Deep Space 15 to what I'm assuming is the Dark Royal. Is there and, a response? <laughs> yeah, Dominus will show up on your screen and just a big smile. So but, because like, this is the first time that you guys are appearing in my game, if you wouldn't mind just quickly introducing your characters. Oh, God. Why is he looking like Oh, that? God, he's big. <laughs> <laughs> he's bigger than the ship. <laughs> a giant Dominus appears. <laughs> she eats the station. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Dominus is a cornet. Um, the major standout for him is the fact that uh, he is an albino cornet, and since that his skin pigment is pale. Um, most cornets are typically a shade of red of some degree, um, but he is pale white. Hmm. Um, he has a multitude of horns as well. Uh, hmm. Most cornets typically just have a couple. He has a ton of them and he has this big grin full of fangs and just smiling he's like Captain Crawford um looking at your ship from the view screen it seemed like you sustained a bit of damage if I may inquire oh no 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 damage hmm well, what brings you to the station? Well, I brought along a little gift, like my message. A long-lost Federation child. And I'm returning it home, back to the nest, into the warm embrace of the Federation's bosom. And he'll, uh, look back and, like, let on through. And, uh, coming out of the Transwar pub behind the Dark Royal... Uh, is the Ophion A, a sleeker looking Prometheus class, probably a prototype. Um, yeah. It appears to be fully intact. Uh, you are getting the proper response codes. However, you do know that the hull is a little bit scraped up because apparently somebody replaced Ophion A with Dark Royal A and then changed it back. <laughs> it's, it's just a whole mess. So it looks very... Well, it looks in a good state of repair. It looks very kit bashed as well. Mm, sort of. That effect, yeah. Okay. Uh, are there. Oh, no, there probably wouldn't be any. Are there any life signs on the ship? There are. There is uh, about three fourths of the expected crew that initially was lost on the Ophion A. Uh, all responding to, like, Federation. I guess I'm not sure if Federation coding would be the right word to use. Starfleet they all coding, like... but yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Captain. It was a fun encounter. I do regret to report that the computer core was completely scrubbed of any and all information due to the potentially harmful holograms and the need to make sure the ship stayed under a certain level of control after its infectious crew were dealt with. I see. Well, I guess it's a good thing that you did so, so thank you. Um, since you're returning the Ophion A, would you want to 
come to the station as well? Or will you be staying on your ship? Well, I think it's time I finally visited. I typically just see the station from afar and always speak with one Dolrum. Let's see. Now. Well, in that case, we'll prepare for your boarding, sir. I be- now, um, I believe it is uh, Lieutenant Chorus. You're the science officer on this ship? Yes, sir. Well, by now, you've passed through the uh, Transwarp Hub, and you were in- your internal sensors are registering a major difference to when you last were here in the tune of approximately 350,000 Borg signatures. Life signs now inhabiting the Transwarp Hub. Oh, this is not good. <laughs> uh, does anybody else see these readings? <laughs> um, I'm. Does is the Master at Arms the tactical officer? He Mr. is. Then I suspect Mr. Cragath, I think that's how you pronounce the name, would mm-hmm. recognize these as well. Um, Chorus would hear the distinctive sound of knuckle cracking. It's like, I will that remind you, Kragath, that these signatures are not good. Uh, did you cut out? I think Sorry, cut out. I probably did. Um, these signatures are not good. I understand. <clears throat> and on that note... So, um, who is in command or pseudo command of the Ophion A? Is it? Um, I can't remember the name of the captain. I literally went back and tried to find it, but uh, we'll call him Captain Thomas for the time okay. being. Okay. Uh, captain Thomas, of course, requests a full uh, rest and relaxation period for his crew as well as debrief. Captain, your Captain Crawford. Uh, grant it to them. Absolutely. So they USS Ophion A. A will be brought inside the station for a full overhaul or full systems check led by Mr. Keevan, I suspect. And will the Dark Royal be docking or tr- just transportering? We'll just transport. Okay. We want everyone to see this ship. <laughs> I can well imagine. Okay, so who is going to meet you? Or who is transporting over and who is going to meet you? Let's start with who's uh, coming Crawford. over. Uh, who's transporting over, sorry. Uh, Captain's just ordering Dominus, Kragath, Chorus, Zazadar, and Hiev to come on over. Uh, so perhaps it's best that I stay behind just in case those Borg signatures are a problem. Oh yeah, I forgot the Russian guy. Yeah, the Borg <laughs> signatures, why was I not informed of this? Well, it's right there on your console, sir. I know it is new bridge, but as you can see on your left hand, there is display. Oh. Very well. Keep us at the uh, battle ready alert. So, standard operating procedure, aye. Yes. <laughs> As uh, Dominus walks towards the transporter pad, too, he's just going to grow in size. He's going to get taller. He's like, well, this will be a fun interaction, don't you think, Kragath? What will be fun about it, Captain? The meeting. Just watch. It'll be amusing. I raise a single eyebrow at him, and then go back to getting prepared to go. And Zazar just shakes his head with a low growl. (laughs) You might want to grow a little larger, or add a few horns if you want to (laughs) add some more intimidation to all of them. But beyond that, you probably don't need to. (laughs) It's more for fun, but maybe I might scare him too much. Is there a limit to how large you can grow, sir? With age adds mass. The older I get, the bigger I can become. It's straining, though. (laughs) Humans have the same problem. As they grow older, they add mass. <laughs> <laughs> they tend to get rounder, I noticed. <laughs> uh, 
And just because I don't think it's been mentioned, uh, Zazdar is a Gorn, uh, mm -hmm. Karas is a Bolian, mm -hmm. and uh, Kragath is a Cornet, but of the usual coloring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, now on the server side, uh, Captain Crawford's obviously coming. Who else? Yep. I'll be there. Mr. Dalrum? Yeah, I'm definitely going to be there. Mr. Keevan? Um, and I will be there as Aria. And Chief Intelligence Officer slash Medical Officer Aria. Okay. And uh, Demos is dealing with security issues because we don't need him talking to himself too much. Even though it will be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the transport goes off without a hitch. Um, they materialize on the pad just as the four of you enter the transporter room. And so we get to introduce ourselves quickly to Kragith, who is a uh, yeah, another cornet, uh, regular coloring. I rec if Elh was right, anything distinctive about you? Uh, the only things that would be distinct about me would be the tattooing I have, which is kind of in the image, and the fact that I am eight feet tall instead of the usual cornet, which I believe grow to about seven to seven feet two inches. Close enough. Close enough, sure. Yeah, I'm a rather impressively tall coordinate. <laughs> uh, we have Miss Chorus, who is the Starfleet liaison officer, I believe, a female Bolian. Yes, sir. Anything else about you? She's just got this grin on her face. <laughs> she's grown accustomed to the, the coronet, so she's not as uncomfortable as she used to be. Excellent. And we have Lieutenant Commander Zazadar. Zazadar. Dar. <laughs> as a Gorn. Uh, what does he look like? Um, He's not a, a stocky Gorn. He's a little bit taller than the typical one, but lean. Um... I kind of made a comparison early on. It's like um, a, a leopard versus a lion mm -hmm. okay. type. Okay. That makes sense. And Transport complete, sir. As the poor ensign manning the transporter console for the day uh, brings aboard four or three individuals who could come from any monster movie and a bolian who seems to have adapted well to her circumstances. And take it away. I will say Dominus decided to go against being super big. He's he's just about 6'8". Six, 6'8 eight. Six, eight height. Mm -hmm. Captain Dominus and Crawford will kind of, you know, come forward and reach out a hand for a handshake. Uh, I'll reach out and go past the hand, grab the forearm, and just, like, do a little clasp. Captain and... Crawford, permission to walk upon the station. Permission granted, Captain, and to your three companions as well. Very good, and he'll just turn and look back at them. Try not to kill anyone. <sighs> Acknowledged. What do you mean, sir? <laughs> Try not to kill anyone. Yes, killing would be very bad on the station. Maiming, though. No. Uh, you just chuckle. He's like, "This is just the coronate version of humor. We will observe and respect and follow your rules and laws of this station." Uh, we had a cornet serving with us at one point, so I understand the humor slightly. Very well. Is this cornet still part of this? Oh, no, she's not. Memory serves. She's not no longer part of even the Federation. Oh. Hmm. Wait, so out of character, ELH, they were decommissioned, right? Or they um, gave they, up their commission? Play. Yeah, okay. They, uh, Got it. they resigned their commission. Got it. It was sad to see her go, but yes. Well, I cannot speak to their character, but I do know that they are a capable individual. And I'm sure that they will find ways to entertain themselves or keep busy 
somehow. Oh, and I I'm have sure that she will as well. Mm. Mm, please, Captain. Uh, what, what are your three companions' names, if I may ask? And he'll look to each of them individually. This is my master at arms, Kragath. Behind me is our ch a science officer. She is a federation, if you cannot tell. Her name is Koros. She is quite capable. And uh, the fine standing Gorn there, that is Zaz, as I prefer to call him. He is our chief engineer in your terms, or maintenance officer in mine. Gotcha. A pleasure yeah. to meet the three of you. And Zaz smiles. Nice shark like smile. Chorus waves. <laughs> nice to meet you too, <laughs> Captain. Uh, oh, there's permanent a uh, scowl. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> uh, permanent scowl still, stand, still stands on Kragath's face as he gives a slight. Um, there's a bar on the station if you would like to talk there, or would you rather take a tour of the station first? Well, I would not mind seeing around the sights, but this bar does sound good. Well, would you mind taking the tour first, and then we'll take you to the bar right after, if you would like. Very well. Please, it's right at this way. point, uh, that area speaks up and says, uh, Sirs, if it's all right with you, I'd like to have a word with Koros while you're giving the tour. Of course, are you okay with that, Captain? That is fine. She is, after all, a Federation officer. Of course. Um, if the three of you would follow me, I'll lead you on this tour myself. Excellent. Of course, I do expect to see you at the bar. Yes, sir. I don't drink much, but I will. I will show up. <laughs> we'll change that. <laughs> oh no. Uh oh. Oh my. Oh dear. And, uh, and as Zaz goes by the uh I guess the teleport officers that are leaving the room, he asks, and what does this button do? And he reaches over to push it and pulls away real quick and continues with the the group. <laughs> I bring up a... uh, uh you cut out there, Scotty. Said I'll bring up the rear of the group. Okay. Uh, Keevan, are you coming with the group, or are you going to do other things? I will definitely stick with the group for now. Actually, I'll talk to um, Zaz and just kind of try to glean what I can about the... Uh, what was the name of the other ship that we got pulled into the, the station? O Ophion A. To find out what I can about that, to know what we're going to need to start working on. Alright, so since not part of the tour group, well, let's take care of Arya and Chorus. Um, anywhere in particular, Arya or just sickbay? Uh, probably one of my quote unquote intelligence offices in sickbay, sure. where I do my intelligence work. Of course. Which really just means that instead of the blue carpet, I have black carpet in, so. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but we uh, we enter into the office, and I sort of motion for Cross to take a seat. And I say, please, uh, have a seat. Can I get you anything? Uh, I understand that cornet replicators are uh, not the best. Uh, admittedly, they are not. But I've, I've tried to make do with what I can. Very good. Well, I called you in here for two reasons. The first is I can't help but notice you haven't made your report on what led to, well... Uh, that, and uh, she kind of points out a window at the uh, Dark Royal Bee, how that came into being. Can you enlighten me, maybe? <laughs> um, I, I was a bit late on pressing the button uh, to send it, but uh, to catch you up on uh, the report, I will say that uh, we ran into uh, some uh, nanotech and they created the they, they had um crap I almost forgot they had uh repaired the ship and um 
change it to what it is as you see right now. Mm -hmm. But the crew, now let me tell you about the crew. Okay, they turned into cats. Now, these cats were, so humans, they were hu like the cats from the planet Earth, uh, the, the ones from Vulcan, and then the Andorian. Now, you have to just imagine this cornet, I want to say it was Kragget, that punched one of these cats. I think Aria it's okay. just sort of Aria just sort of <laughs> listens to all this and, and just slowly raises the eyebrow higher and higher and eventually goes, uh, Cross, are you feeling okay? I, I'm not exactly sure if this is some elaborate prank or not. It's, I promise it's not a prank. It's just cats. I've never seen this, <laughs> this many different species of cats in one place. So... Yeah. Okay, if I understand correctly, so you, you found the Ophiane, the crew had been turned into cats, and this was because of the nanotechnology that rebuilt your ship? I, uh, okay, so I want to say that they were trying to communicate with the crew and in turn change them into cats because we tried to communicate with them and we turned into, or at least some of our genetic, like, we were starting to turn into cats. But then we managed to not turn it into cats. And it is as you see now. I see. I uh, clearly will need to read this report fully because I still don't understand half of it, but I promise it sounds that like my... an adventure. <laughs> I promise my written report makes a lot more sense. It's, it's, a, it's difficult to... I guess express into words right now. It's still running my. Don't worry, uh, you're not in trouble or anything. I was just from an intelligence standpoint. I wanted to know what I was dealing with, um, which kind of leads into my second point. Um, we'd like you to take on additional responsibilities aboard the Dark Royal. Of course, the Captain Dominus will have to sign off on it. But we'd like to upgrade your position a little bit. Oh, uh, uh, what what exactly am I taking? Well, as uh, you of course have your own unique ship out there, but you're going places that uh, Starfleet isn't, and that puts you in the unique pos uh, position of uh, having intelligence that we don't. So. And she sort of rummages in a desk, pulls out a uh, a box, slides it over. There's a uh, an extra pin in there if you want it. Basically, she is offering you a uh, promotion. <laughs> Cora just stares at it, and her, she's like, it, "I I I don't have." To... Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I'll t I'll take it. All right, is, is there a catch? No, well, we want to see more intelligence reports, preferably not all about cats, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> they, they want the ship. Okay. So if you can get, get uh, give us the OV on A, that would be in. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. And uh, congratulations on your promotion. I truly appreciate it. I mean, if we can manage to get the Yofi and A, and uh, that that would be even better, to be honest. It would take a lot of pressure off of my back. Oh, I'm sure we'll figure out something, but uh, you're dismissed, Lieutenant Commander. Thank you. That's all I had. All right. So we are going to cut to the rest of the group doing a station tour. And... Just to save us from traveling through set piece after set piece, we'll just do an imagination station. So, Captain, where are you bring? Where are you bringing the visiting guests? Um, I would show them essentially the works of the station, save for like the computer core. Basically, anything super duper important. But you know, I'd probably show them to like the bridge and give them an extensive tour of the promenade on the station and 
anything else they might like to see. Okay. Within intelligence reasons. Of course. Naturally. I like to imagine that there's like a, it probably not packed, but the moment they start seeing cornets, it's just like parting the seas. It was like, oh yeah, your path is clear. Ember left that impression on people. So yeah. A uh, small question: How high are the ceilings? Uh, uh, they're yeah, they're high enough in some places for Kragath, I would assume. Oh yeah. I don't think there's anywhere where it would be a tight squeeze. There might be I'm just wondering how many like... times I hit my head on a doorway. Yeah, there's a few <laughs> little clearance doorways, but even then, most doorways are eight foot. I'll say Demos is on promenade. He's wearing jeans, work boots, and just like a plaid shirt, and he's talking with civilians. There's probably a couple you would have to duck under, Kragath, but nothing, you know, terrible. We will have the constant complaint of me having to hunch over to avoid smacking my head on something. <laughs> And if so, I'm just going to have to start writing notes and make sure I extend those doorways eventually. <laughs> if you run make Kragath doorways through... accessible to all species. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Um... As we're walking around, I'll turn to our three guests and just... So, what do you think of the station? It is bright, clean, and packed. A lot of casualties if this base was attacked. Well, it's not currently as packed as what it can be. Fair, but still, a lot of casualties. A lot of points on this station that if a railgun were to puncture, I doubt your force fields would maintain atmosphere for long. Depressurization, loss of pressure, most likely loss of gravity. You're looking at a bloody mess. You'd be surprised, Captain Dominus, how well this station will hold up, especially after a few extra modifications get placed in here. Well, I hope that's true. Civilians have no place in the battle. Well, we rely on our civilians just as much as we rely on our Starfleet crew. Oh, you use them as cannon fodder, then? Meat shields. That's not, not what we're saying, no. <laughs> Did Is someone say meat? Yeah, Zazadar? No. Uh, we have your snacks back on the ship. You can uh, eat some fresh meat soon. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Again, it is the humor... As a militaristic-led species, we find our humor to be considered morbid. So but, I was shaking you said no. On the it, captain's back. It does provide a sense of understanding and planning. If we can joke about the worst, it means we've already prepared for it. I can see what you mean there, but Captain Dominus. I've seen a couple of races here and there through my lifetime that kind of follow a same phys um, theology of sorts, if you will. But I've never actually known enough of coronets to um, see that in my... Well, if you'd like to get uh, to know a coronet rather well, buy me a drink. That is something I can do. <laughs> Speaking of which, we're just about to reach our local club. Pub. <clears throat> More of a club, I would think, considering it has a dance floor. Uh, the Eclipse. Its full name is the Blue Eclipse, after one of the Bolian uh, sceneries. However... That is far too many syllables for most people to say. Uh, as soon as I figure out where the heck its token sheet is, there it is. Here you are. There's a lot of people here who shouldn't be here anymore. There we go. You all wander in. Um, considering it is the middle of Alpha Shift, it's not 
too packed at the moment. Mazzy Parrick, the bartender, is already whipping up drinks. He waves you, or he waves at you friendly, and holds out a hunk of meat for the Gorn. Uh, the uh, Zazadar, not Tuesday, who has magically shown up. <laughs> I'd like to think that Nia is almost ever present here when he's not <laughs> with uh, Commander Dolrum's daughter or in engineering. You know, yeah, he's becoming the new Morn. Yeah, he talks too much though, but still. <laughs> and Mazzy I mean, quickly whips up the regular or the regulars for the captain Keevan and Dolrum and for Dominus and Craigeth he pulls out the weapon or the weapons grade I th- what was it called Vulcanium uh, whatever it was that made em- um, Ember's Blood Rose drink that literally smokes and vibrates on its own accord in the glass No, oh, thank you. Do you have the irradiated one? Or is this the safe version of it? Safe, I'm afraid. I mean, Starfleet's uh, Starfleet's uh, safe handling act is accommodating to many types of drinks. However, it stops short at the radiation uh, f- flavorings. Ah, oh, shame. Gamma has such a unique taste. Yes, but it also tends to rot the hands if not touched properly, so... And it can be used as an emergency power source. That is true. (laughs) Yeah, Dallas will just down it. Interesting facility. I'm assuming this is for recreational purposes. That it is. Also comes in very well with diplomatic services. Interesting. I guess if you get someone drunk enough, they'll be agreeable to anything. Not what I meant, but okay. <laughs> Plus, there's a couple of races that are very intolerant to alcohol, and, well, it doesn't work out very well. Just trust me on that one. Hmm. So, do you have any questions about the Ophion? I could, my one first question would be, where and how the hell did you find it? We found it in a, I believe it was a devoid of life system. It was a Y-class planet. Demon, I believe you classify it was transmitting a weak signal. We were close enough to pick it up, and we followed it. We made landfall in our tank and headed towards it. When After... you say tank, Crawford raises like a curious eyebrow. Oh, yes. Um, a shuttlecraft with a railgun on it. Y'all oh, like your railgun. A tank. It's a tank. We do like our rail guns. It, they're perfect. We get in close past the shields. We fire at your shield generators. Goodbye, shields. We fire at your warp core. Hello, breach. We fire at any of these components. And the enemies left crippled with the ship mostly left intact, depending where we destroy. It allows for us to board and subdue the crew. And if need be... Scuttle or claim the vessel. Noted. But they have a problem hitting lava monsters. Yes. We do not speak of the lava monster. <laughs> it lava is just a monster? myth that will haunt you in your dreams, Dark Kragath. Yes. A, I believe a silicon based life form that was primarily rock and lava. Interesting. Kind of sounds like the Horta. On the same planet where we found the Ophion. Yes. Ooh. The Ophion did not match the standard records, though, of what we had assumed her configuration to be. 
Hmm. So we investigated, and Kragath here punched a cat against a wall. <laughs> it attacked first. It leapt out like a cat would leap out. And anyways, we proceeded through the vessel, encountered a couple of uh, interesting holograms, and Emergency we... medical, I'm assuming. Yes, it, uh... It wasn't kind towards Cornets. I'll leave it at that. We quickly discovered, though, that there was a other life form, not just the cats of this ship. Through the investigation of our very skillful science officer, we determined that the felines had traced DNA of, well, Vulcans, humans, and other Federation species. Hmm. Yes. The the ship was surrounded by weird glowing wisps of light and energy. We found out later that they were a form of life, uh, particularly a nanite colony. They were constructed eons ago as a ship repair base. But because they had no way to interface with the crew, they, unfortunately and unwittingly, reverted them into felines. But contact was established, and the science officer chorus was able to devise a way to return the crew to their normal human state. And with my diplomatic skills, we were able to secure the vessel, have it fixed up from the damage we had to incur upon it, and we wiped the memory core. We could not risk the holograms gaining control if someone accidentally said, bring in the holograms. It took three days for the captain to stop coughing up hairballs. We don't speak about that, Kragath. And that is one issue you will have on the Ophion to clean it up and get it ready. Yes. Is the air scrubbers, they're still overloaded with cat hair. I've got a couple of techs that are going to be due to do some extra laboring, so I, I think I know just the people for the job on that one, but thank you for the heads up on As long as you're not planning on doing that to my son, Keevan. Oh, he's going to supervise, please. Fair enough. And in walks Chorus and Arya after their chat. Is this a party? It certainly looks like it, doesn't it? I've There's never a... really been to one. <laughs> as soon as Chorus, um, as soon as you set foot into the bar, um, there is the na There's a the opening four strains of the Bolia national anthem that plays any time a Bolian enters. And Mazzy, Im Mazzy immediately appears beside you and offers you a very cold blue drink. It's very sticky and very sweet. She gets really excited. Thank you! Any bald bluey is welcome here. Well, anyone is, but, you know, species preference and all that, and he gives you a comical wink. She's really excited about all this. She's like, oh my goodness. He takes a, a sip out of her drink and is just really happy. Could you please roll me a, a fitness medicine test, please? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> oh, no. You saw that coming. Because you told First me. First roll of a combined game. Let's you have see. not mentioned, or you mentioned specifically you don't drink, so, you know. <laughs> it's really true. Uh, this is going to be a, just a difficulty of. Well, you haven't drunk yet. Uh, yeah, difficulty of two, but you pass it, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Uh, so, whatever it was in that drink, uh, let's call it an ice... An I, uh, a... Ice flow? Yeah. Well, Bolian's, I don't... Bolia isn't as cold as Andoria, but... Yeah, let's call it the ice flow, just because it keeps everything in line. Um, very, th very thick, very sweet and incompatible with most humanoid uh, digestive tracts 
and you feel it running straight down your throat, lands in your stomach with the uh, effect of a 50 cal shell or 50 caliber shell striking a watermelon. But man, is that where does it leave a good taste on your tongue? <laughs> you can just see blue, just getting bluer at the cheeks. Just yeah. <laughs> That was really strong. I, it's like, and she's tapping her cheeks. She's like, it's, it's just supposed to feel this way. That was good. Thank you. Anytime, sweetie. And she'll, and he'll, uh, he'll saunter back to his bar just in time for Nia to pass up his, or refill Nia's empty glass. So, as, as Arya and Chorus comes over, so what did you two have to chat about? Uh, Arya literally just points at Karas's collar. Cats. <laughs> cats. Cats. Oh, cats. We were just talking about cats too. She about Are you talking about the line? animal or the old Earth musical? <laughs> <laughs> I watched that once. I was disgusted. I apologize. As was I, Master at Arms, as was I. I was told it was required reading to know about the humans and their artful taste. That one's one that we they don't really speak about. Donald's just gonna tilt his head looking at Chorus and he's like, Ah, congratulations, Lieutenant Commander. I I appreciate it, sir. Well, we'll find you new duties befitting, befitting of such a title. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, hopefully, I... Um, let's say, hopefully that my... <laughs> uh, sensors checks do better so Cricket doesn't just bounce in the air. Oh, you won't be doing just the same work over and over. You're going to have more responsibilities. Congratulations, you've increased your workload by 50 to 60 percent. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> she just takes another I suggest really learning off. a new sleep schedule. Nothing like sobering up to more work. <laughs> you assume she'll sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you just see that smile kind of slightly disappear <laughs> it's not as big as anymore it, it's not as big anymore that was just chuckles oh my God. celebrate have a good time I'll, I'll, I'll try <laughs> uh, meanwhile everyone is drinking uh, Lieutenant Commander Zazdar you notice another <laughs> Gorn in a Starfleet uniform drinking in one of the corners or possibly tearing fresh meat off bone However, Gorn do. He is eating deer jerky. Ah. Mm, that'll work. I look over and kind of look back. Fair enough. Stay focused on the table. You will feel something hit you in the back, lightly. And you hear a clank and a little clatter on the ground. It's a piece of beef jerky. Okay. I walk, pick it up, walk back over, show it to him, and thank you. And take a big pull right off of it. Gorn and Starfleet. Really? <laughs> Yes, I am Tuesday. What is your clan name? I no longer have a clan. Then what is your name? Zazadar. Ah. Uh. Zazadar. 
It is good to see another Gorn. I I understand. Being on a ship without being the only one of your kind <coughs> tends to make it difficult. Do they allow you to keep your meat in the Jeffrey's tubes? No, they do not. They uh, call it a sanitation violation. Uh, that adds flavor. I agree, but I prefer it jerked now. Dried and salted. Teriyaki is my favorite. <laughs> is that what this is? Yes. And builds up the jaw muscles too, I see. It is extra chewy for that purpose. <laughs> Can come in handy in hand to hand combat too. <laughs> I prefer to stun them first. It is funny to see their face when they wake up and I'm next to them. <laughs> but Starfleet does not allow me to eat. I have had the same problem to some degrees. It is sad, but I understand. I owe them much, so I will follow their rules. Were you rescued early? Grew up in Starfleet? Yes. The Cladden ship was attacked by something unknown at the time. Me and my siblings barely made it. I suffered the most wounds to keep them safe. And Starfleet rescued, and they allowed me and my siblings to find our place. Well thought. And what about you? You serve a cornet. I serve for money at this point. I was on a merchant ship as engineer until our captain lost the ship in a game at the double tables. Here on this very station. Did you eat this captain? I haven't found him. He left the crew to fend for themselves. I was actually trying to see if I could find our XO. I have something to give to him if I can. Interesting. Well, I wish you the best of luck in locating them. Thank you, and honor to you as you continue with Starfleet. You've had a good start, it sounds like. May continue. Thank you. I hope to one day be in charge of a defiant, so I may blast my enemies to smithereens. You need to come aboard the Cornet, the Dark Royal. It is amazing, the power in the ship. Maybe one day, but for now, I keep this station running. And I tip the bone left over on the bone to him, in a little bit of a salute and place it on his plate. Said, I need to return to my captain. Good fortune. Farewell, Zazadar. And to you too, death. And just go back eating this food. Okay. Anybody have any other conversations they'd like to do? Honestly, I can't top that. <laughs> ah, right. Oh, no. Wasn't didn't Kivon want to talk to Zaz about the Ophion? I believe he did. Yep, that's true. Yep. Well, you're in a pub. May as well. So, Zazadar, besides the 
cat hair in the uh, filters. What else am I going to be looking that into when we touch the Ophion A to get you repaired? There will be many changes from the original specs, I am sure. These nanites kept doing a constant repair of the outer surface of any damage inside the ship, almost as it occurred over time. The demon planet had a very corrosive atmosphere that was constantly wearing down on the ship. And we found it in perfect condition. That is highly intriguing. I might actually be very interested in that. I know I got a, one project I'm finishing up with Lieutenant Commander Demos, but yeah, this is definitely, you know, getting this set up, that's going to be. So the planet was corrosive, and <laughs> the nanites were keeping everything together. Very intriguing. And you said the holograms are under control. Right now, there are no holograms. The computer core was purged and then restarted. The <coughs> nanites tried to use the holograms as a means to communicate with the crew. And their highest form of worship, maybe, was a feline-based life form. And the EM, EMH, the medical hologram, was, let's say, twisted, where he ended up converting all of the crew into, at the cellular level, to a feline related on their planet. And if it, their planet didn't have a feline it came up with a best guess it was strange but and he tried to turn our captain attack the captain until lieutenant koros was able to shut it down that is very intriguing yeah i've never been the biggest fan of holograms however yeah i think it was probably a really good idea removing that program out of the central core. Anyhow, so I may be calling upon you to get some additional help or any guidance on what happened. You were able to keep an eye on things while, as you were bringing it back with the Dark Royal, yes? I tried to learn as much as I could of the Ophion and its condition and its capabilities before and after. And he smiles. Big, sharky smile. Sounds excellent. You know, we're, I, I, I will definitely glean some information on you. And then to, of course, go get go right up against that Gorn grin, I'm going to pull out, pull out my Denobulan smile, which is the <laughs> exaggerate. Yep, yep, that one. And the Sharky smile tries to get a little bit bigger and starts to shake a little bit. Yeah. I do have a question for you, Lieutenant Commander. Go right ahead. Is there a way for me to find a particular person if they're still on the Cerebus station? I don't see why not. We may want to double check with Commander Aria or even Lieutenant Commander Demos. I mean, as an engineer, I mean, I've got some clout. However, I'd probably run it through Commander Demos. Or you could simply ask me, since I'm assuming this conversation I can at least somewhat hear. <laughs> uh, well, Captain, I was looking for a fellow Gorn that I served with. He was the and, XO in the merchant vessel. And what was their name? Sarash. Uh, I will find a way to, you know, go through all the people on the station. We probably do not have them on the station, do we? As far as I'm aware, too, and as far as you're aware, Tuesday is the only Gorn serving on the station. Mm. Uh, as far as I'm aware, Lieutenant Commander, uh, the Gorn you just talked to is the only other one on the station. I'm sorry. 
No problem. Thank you. Were they, uh, for lack of a better way of putting it, a precious individual to you, if I may inquire? Someone I owed a debt. I see. Well, if they ever happen to come through, I'm, I'll send a message to your good captain and be sure to let you know. Thank you. Any bows his head. Now, another point of order that I'm thinking we should talk about, and I'm sure concerned you whenever you first arrived here, was the massive amount of Borg signatures. Yes, I was waiting to see when you would bring that up. Well, uh, the commander would be better t to elaborate on this since he was the one who's met a decent portion of them, but they're part of what is known as the Interlink. They're a collection of Borg that have been freed from the Collective. And if I read the report correctly, Commander, the our Chief of Security was injected with some of the Interlink's nanites? Yes, that was... Um, that did occur. But we've been offering asylum to those members of the Interlink. Uh, they are the members of the Borg who in our knowledge uh, from... Voyager's travels and from Seven of Nine they are the members of what used to be called Unimatrix uh, Zero One or it was the Borg who retained their consciousness underneath all of the all of their components so the way it's been explained is when the Borg were eradicated the members of the Interlink were left to their own volitions, freed from the Collective. So, not a threat. Not that would all. be correct. Alright, well, as long as they don't bother me or my ship, I won't put a few holes in them then. It's right about then that uh, Captain Crawford gets a chime on his communicator. Uh, this is Lieutenant Dust to Captain Crawford. Uh, just one moment, Lieutenant. If you'll uh, no, me. not one moment, no. sir. With all due respect, we have Dominion ships coming through the transwarp hub. Uh, hey, put the station on red alert, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. And of oh, course, all the lights go red. <laughs> People start leaving the bar because you don't stay in a bar during red alert. Unless you're mourn. Yeah, unless Cap you're mourn. Oh, Captain, Commander, I know this is pressing, but can I have a moment of your time in some place secluded? Um, I would like to be up in operations, but if you would, Commander, I'll take care of this. I'll be. Up, I will join you up there shortly. All right. And Crawford will, you know, ver at a very fast pace, kind of like walk out of the bar and go up to operations. Okay. Uh, once he leaves, um, ah, Dominus pulls Dolrum into a dark corner, or vice versa, and you guys can have your quick conversation. I'm going to actually look at uh, Kevin's still here, right? Yeah, I'm sure. still there at the moment. Uh, Kraggett's gonna look at Kevon and state, Where are your largest guns? Well, we've got the phaser array right around the periphery of the mushroom cap, the very top of the station. Basically, at the largest portion is the phaser. Take me there. Okay. Actually, what I'll do is I'll probably head. We'll probably head down to deck ninety, which is actually torpedo prep and distribution. All right. Now this could potentially be a prob. Uh, potentially s take the dark royal into a different game, or have 
lasting effects. Are you showing them the transwarp torpedoes? Because that's kind of classified. The trans no, just the regular torpedoes. Tra or transphasic torpedoes. I sorry, transphasic. Man, okay. transwarp torpedoes would be a cool thing, though. I'm just gonna throw that right? out there. That'd be terrifying. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Keevan, you have a new job. <laughs> How could we <laughs> apply? No. How could we apply transwarp coils to our railgun? What? <laughs> I want faster than light railguns now. You see that? You see that ship that's on the other side of the quadrant? I want to hit that. <laughs> You see that oh. ship? Yes, sir. I don't. Make it disappear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Dominus and Dalrum? Yes. Um, okay, Commander. The Dominion are coming here, and I don't like that. I don't know what they're coming here for, but I have a pretty good idea, and I wish your captain would have stayed just for a second, because I think it might be dealing with me. Oh. A number of years ago during the Dominion War, one of their vessels tried to contact me as part of their outreach, and I summarily destroyed that vessel along with a changeling aboard it. If you want to know more, I'd prefer a private setting and the captain. All right, follow me, and I'm going to take him up to Ops. Okay, so we'll have a few minutes for, um, because I want to go to the external uh, section first. So, Captain Crawford, you are entering ops at the same time the Jem'Hadar, or the Dominion fleet, is exiting the Transwarp hub. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lieutenant Dusk, this is what you guys are seeing on the, on the station. Are here. Oh, boy. Oh, shit. Please tell me we're not doing fleet battle. Don't. No. <laughs> that's why I'm co-GMing. Yeah, that's why, <laughs> that's why ELH is co-GMing, because he, run, he runs space combat far more efficiently than I could. <laughs> so, that's what you see. And, so who is currently in ops? Obviously the captain. Obviously Dusk. Um, Demos, you've been obviously away because of split personality uh, where would where would you be at the moment um, he was doing like the civilian Friday casual wear mm -hmm. on a promenade so he'd probably be up in ops but in casual civilian wear does casual civilian wear include a Hawaiian shirt uh, it's actually a lumberjack plaid shirt with the sleeves rolled up uh, Canadian style I'm okay with this okay and we have Keevan is currently also out so, there we go. Captain Crawford? The attendant does just sort of motions at the view screen and says, I don't have words to describe the amount of firepower that just came out of that transwarp hub, sir. That's certainly a lot. Have they many made any attempt at hailing us? And uh, there is a hail that comes mm -hmm. in. But it's not a hail. It's just uh, opening fire. Actually, I, oh, sorry. My apologies. God. There will be a hail. Oh, there will be a hail? Never yep. mind. There Go will ahead. be a hail. <laughs> yeah. If they're going to shoot you, they'll at least tell you why first. Fair. <laughs> oh, hail. Yeah. <laughs> so the the view screen shifts to the, a Vorta wearing the traditional um, eye, uh, eye patch. You know, eye ah, head worn view screen mm -hmm. and it is this individual uh, it would help if I put him on there so he is a fairly skinny uh, skinny face elongated head uh, receding hairline not a Vorta that has been met by Starfleet before uh, his features are dead set scowly doesn't look like he's smiled once in his entire life Captain Cr Of course there would be Starfleet this through a unexplored gate. Captain, I'm Crusader Ganless of the Dominion, currently on a crusade to rebuild the Great Link. Our our um, yeah, our detection system detected that there is a changeling present 
on board your station. And we are going to get it. We are going to find it and retrieve it. And you are in our way. End communications. Oh, shit. <laughs> now, we are going to enter into combat. And this is where ELH will take over. Alright. We are uh, put us on that map. Alright. So this is your chance before uh, as I bring everything off the right layer. Uh, if you want your ships to be anywhere in particular, this is your time. Okay. If you want so... the Dark Royal to be anywhere, uh, now would be the chance to the Lunette's currently on mission, isn't it? Lunette yeah. is currently on, but he should be back maybe in time for a thematic entrance. Um, Just I think with... we do. Because I think the only one that's not super combat capable in our support fleet is the Hawking, right? Oh, the support fleet is out and about. Support oh, fleet God. is not around. I was going to say the last one was the Small. Perseus, and it left between now, last session and now. Small question. Uh, how quickly can we get me to the... Can we get Krogeth to the Dark Royal? Because he has a few... He has a trick up his sleeve that he can do. Uh, I would say it would take a minor action once we actually enter into combat. So if you want to be on the Dark Royal, let's have you do the beam over before combat breaks out. Yeah, well, I want to play a little bit with our rail guns. Okay. But yeah, uh, this is pretty much going to be a uh, accelerated uh, starship combat. Um, if you're not on the Dark Royal, you're going to have to compete with uh, the station crew for things to do. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, you only get turns equal to as many players as there are. So that's what, one, two, three, four, seven turns. So the enemy is going to have a hell of a lot more turns than you do. And a quick reminder, uh, ELH, that the station has the um, enhanced structure talent, so it suffers breaches on eight, not five. Mm -hmm. In yep, case... I do have a note of that. Excellent. All right. So uh, real quick, who is going to the Dark Royal? Krageth is going over. Uh, Dominus has to go to the ops. So. Okay. Uh, what about uh, Cross and what about uh, Zazadar? Oh, what do you Koros? mean, sir? Can't hear you, Cross. You're lighting up, but we can't hear you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm like, eh. uh, where do you need us, Captain? Uh, I'd prefer every one of the Dark Girl to be back on the Dark Girl. Except All right. for Dominus. We'll go back to the dark. All right. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to split up your turns. Uh, the dark royal is going to get three turns, and the station is going to get four. And then uh, we'll just sort of uh, play it by ear from there. But uh, I'm going to be spending, I guess I should actually, is there a threat deck I can pull from? You know, no, I never actually, I've never made a threat deck. I just kept it on my own. I'll, I'll just, uh, let's see, there's seven players, so that's 14 threat. <sighs> All right, so the good news is I'm spending two of that threat to immediately go first. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happens is the yellow dot Jem'Hadar destroyer, uh, it looks a little odd. It, it doesn't look like your your typical Jem'Hadar design, almost as if someone took a Sona battlecruiser and a Jem'Hadar battleship, and then they had a love child, and then that love child was rejected by its parents. It's kind of <laughs> like... Um, wow. Wow. Where this is going is the destroyer, the yellow dot, opens fire on the station. And I'm also going to spend one threat to give it an additional die. So let's see what happens. All right. Well, it's a good thing I did spend for that extra die because you're getting hit with an isolytic array. I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, let's see. How much damage is that? That is... Vicious two, so we got a count effects here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's 14, 22. All right, so the isolytic arrays charge up and a bluish white beam lances out from the destroyer, impacts the station, and deals a massive amount of damage. And yes, you did hear that correctly, 22 
damage. Hmm. Don't break my station, Yelich. <laughs> I mean, I did give him so, permission to break things, so... I'm trying to think. So the the deep space 15 is what? Uh, resistance? So it is, I believe, a scale 10. Which means it has only a resistance of 10. Mm-hmm. Which means uh, you're taking 12 damage there, which is a breach. Yeah. So, uh, let's see where that breach is. Oh, well, that's great. So, uh, the beam lances out, nearly takes out mo half of your shields. And in the process, your sensors go down on the uh, station. And what that means is that until someone performs the restore minor action... Uh, you can't do anything that involves sensors and any attacks made by the station increase in difficulty by one. And that's just the opening volley. But the good news is I'm not going to be a little that much of a dick. It is now either the Dark Royals or the station's turn. Hmm. Well, I think that's an obvious call for me to go ahead and restore the sensors. Yeah. Okay, so that's your minor action. What are you doing for your full action? Um, the next best thing. Scan for weakness on the gem her the thing that just poked a hole in my station. <laughs> okay. Yes, Kivan has gotten very possessive of Deep Space 15. Also, hold up one second. So how much shields does the station have? I thought it had 16 hit. Um... Just had it up. Hang on a sec. Yeah, because it's not adding it properly when. Uh... Um... Huh. Yeah, because I tried to make it a bar and the bar is freaking out. Oh, fun. Um, what's the pips say? I think it's. I think we have. Be... One, two, three, four, five, Seventeen. Seventeen supposed to be. Okay, so you should have five remaining. All right. Yeah. All right. So yeah. hopefully that stops the bar from freaking out. But uh, scan for weakness is going to be a sensors and I believe a security. No, actually, it is a control science, and the station will assist you with a sensor security. Difficulty of two because it is at medium range. Uh, I shall roll for the station. See sensor security. Ship always has a focus. All right, so now help from the station. Good. All right, well, uh, with a difficulty of two, unfortunately, uh, you don't get a hell of a lot from the destroyer. You can tell it's there. But uh, maybe they hit your sensor so hard that it doesn't know what to do about it. Either that, or I also use my determination to reroll my zero. Is that? <laughs> do you want to pop you that this turn? That. Yeah, that that is an option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what? Wait. Now my options with that are either use a determination to give me a third die that automatically becomes two <laughs> successes, or but since you've already that. rolled, yeah, <laughs> you got to do that before the roll. Unfortunately. Good point. So, um, yeah, I'll reroll. All right. Okay. What value okay. are you tapping? There is more sol more than one solution to a problem. It's like, that didn't seem to work. Let's see if I can find another <laughs> answer. All right. Yeah, go for it. And I'm literally just re-rolling the one die, right? Yep. As yep. many as you want. Yeah. Just not the stations. You can't re-roll the stations. Yeah, I'll just re-roll my one zero. Hey, yes. right. two successes. So yes, uh, you have to do a little percussive maintenance, but you now apparently have a good lock on to the lateral array of the destroyer. And I'm just going to go ahead and give it a little wavy mark. And quickly, I'm going to roll one challenge die to see if I get my determination back due to being a veteran talent. All right. Mm. Yeah. Nuts. That is a negative. All right, so unless someone spends uh, two momentum or, well, I guess you don't have momentum. You can either give me two threat 
or if you have quick to action, I on have anyone. quick to action. <laughs> All right. So who's going next? Is it another deep space or is it another dark royal? I think. Uh, small question. The dark royal hasn't acted yet, correct? Correct. But technically, you guys are on the same player turn. Right. Cor- correct. I'm uh, gonna... Small question. Yep. Oh, um, sorry. I was gonna ask a question. Uh, could I do a salvo from where I am? Uh, with your railgun. Yes. Uh, I would say that you have to remember. So first things first, the railgun is difficulty three at close range. You're looking at long range, so that makes it a difficulty of five. So if you okay. want to try a difficulty of five, then you can, but you would have to get closer if you wanted to do a difficulty of three. And just remember that firing a salvo would give me three threat. Indeed. Uh Additional question. Can we ram one of them? <laughs> I believe you can. Let me double check here. Uh, again, it's supposed to be a uh, close range, but if you were to attempt it from where you are, it would be a difficulty of four. And we can also move too. As yes, you right. can move, but we... moving is your action. Oh, okay. Well, what's your plan, Kragath? Well, we have to get the ship this ship into position because it is one of the most devastating ships we have currently. Uh, I would, I would suggest moving it to a advantageous position. To how many spaces can we? Uh, if you are wanting to not spend any power, you can go anywhere within six hexes. Uh, and the good news I'm... is that actually moving the ship is a difficulty zero task, so you can't get momentum this way. That's what I was thinking. Um, I want to move closer to the Gem Hadar Destroyer, the bottom okay. one. That way we can get to a point where I can ram it and then turn my railgun and immediately blast the battleship. Okay. So that's going to be a control and con, and uh, the Dark Royal will assist you with an engine's con. I think that's Hiev's department, right? Uh, yes, Hiev is not here, though. So I will roll for Hiev. Because I didn't put her sheet in. Of all the sheets <laughs> I thought would be useful, I did not include Hiev's. <laughs> Our flood controller, no. Uh, well, I have oh, bad no. news. Hiev did not do great. So uh, no momentum, but you do move. So small blessing. Wait, we have to roll a ship, right? Uh, oh, wait, it no, doesn't she matter failed, because so. she didn't succeed. Yeah, the assist unfortunately doesn't matter. Gonna have to going to have to go to the uh, to the to the blood pits tomorrow. I am sorry, Master at Arms. Unfortunately, is new bridge. I am getting used to controls. Apparently, I have ejected some form of quarters out into space. Is not important. <laughs> is this a Dovax we be ejected out? <laughs> All right. So that is the Dark Royals movement. All right, so that means we have Jem Hadar up next, and uh, since you've gotten oh so close to the Blue Dot Destroyer, I think it's going to open fire on the Dark Royal. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, spend one momentum here. It will have to get past the... The thing that did 22 damage is going to shoot our scale four. I'm sure you'll be fine. Oh, no. Oh, oh, boy. Jeez. I, okay. I do want to mention that it is firing directly upon our neutronium front, so I don't know how much that helped. Well, uh, let's let's count effects here. That is one, two, three. Uh, so that is six. So that is 16 damage, which you have resistance of six, I believe. Or did I make it five? Uh, you have resistance of six, so you take ten damage, and that is a breach. So the Dark Royal That's two breaches, I believe. Uh, no, because you still have quote unquote shields remaining. Okay. But I have rolled a structure breach, which means I now roll a challenge die. Good news, nobody is injured, or well, nobody is injured. That matters. I did not have the uh, bear traps and explosives put under my seat go off. Yeah, so that's 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 the good news. Uh, unfortunately, though, that is uh, that is what you're dealing with. But uh, hey, it's either the deep space 15's turn or the dark royals turn. 
Um, well, I might try something here because we need some momentum. So, I with Crawford, I'm going to do the rally task. Okay. If I remember that. Yep, you do a uh, presence command difficulty of zero. Yeah. Let's see. Do I have a? Uh... Eh, nah, none of my values would apply, so it'd just be a straight presence command. Uh, team dynamics is a focus. Yes, but I'm going to require you to give a good speech. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so well, considering we just got obliterated. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure where... <laughs> I'm not good at speeches on the fly, but I'll try. Um, these people came here as friends, referring to the crew of the Dark Royal. And they're helping us fight what seems like a very large threat. And now, I think it's time that we truly show them why we're called Cerberus Station. Unleash hell. <laughs> I would recommend not rolling complications because I will laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing my luck. Knock on wood. Well, I, no okay, hey, you get one momentum. We Maybe it wasn't one. as inspiring, but hey, it's a momentum. <laughs> All right, so that is uh, your turn, which means it goes back to the Gem Hadar. So I think uh, what's going to happen is the battleship. Let me check range here. Uh, okay. let me real quick adjust something on the map. Uh, one unit. There we go. Now it should be much easier to measure distances. All right, so that is uh, nine hexes, which means they're at long. So the battleship is going to, as I double check their sheet to make sure I'm not doing something odd. Yeah, they're going to get closer. Uh, specifically, they're just going to kind of fly up right about here. So they are at close range to you. But hey, that's uh, that's the Gem Hadar's turn. Yep. So uh, Dark Royal or uh, Cerberus Station? Uh, is it okay if Demos fires? I was about to say, it's like, I would very much like Demos to open fire. So... Uh, Demos is at his console. He's going to clap his hands, his little nanite hands, and he's going to just put it on the console, and I'm gonna use his uh, burn bright like a solar flare to give us a vicious one. Okay. Uh, what ship are you shooting at? This is the ship that just got near us. Uh, that would be a close range and would make your difficulty a three. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, because <laughs> I'm going to pop. Uh, I'm a multi-purpose tool. Use me. Determination. Okay. <laughs> And yeah, we're gonna do, do, do so. That's two right there. So I just need one. We open up the sheet here. Where is it? There it is. Uh, and so that's control security. Control security assisted by the station's weapon security. And station. Starfleet tactical systems. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Nice. Oh boy! Yeah, that, that is, station uh, didn't help, but you got you got a lot. Yeah, two so momentum. I believe you get two momentum off that. Yeah, you hit him. Go ahead and roll me some damage. Nice. And Do we station. want to use? What are you using? Are you using the station's phaser array? Well, phaser because array. he didn't say he was firing torpedoes. Yeah, I assume the array. Okay. Yeah, phaser because so, that, that's the only way I can give um, it the vicious one. Yeah. Obviously, versatile two towards shaving off Here's resistance. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Versal okay. T to the resistance. So and that... then I still have those momentum, right? Mm. Yeah. Yep. yep. Your momentum. Excellent. So we'll. Um... Yeah, okay. So that's 13 dice I got to roll. <laughs> I'm going to re roll all those arrows. So that's okay. one, two, four, three, five, four, five, six, five, seven. six, seven zeros. <laughs> seven zeros. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Yeah. So there's a total of, because uh, now we have to count effects here. So that's three, one, two, four, three, four. I count six effects. Yes. Yeah, so that was 17 before the effects. Add six. That's 23. 
Or is that 22? 20, I was right. It was 23. 23. Yeah. Uh, so you deal 23 damage to the battleship, and uh, yeah, they take it pretty well. Uh, their shields immediately pop, and uh, I'm going to give you a bone here. Did, did you maybe nominate spread on your array? Uh, sure, yes. Okay, cool. Because <laughs> that'll deal a total of three breaches to them and effectively knock them out of this round of combat. So how it looks from everyone up there, he rubbed his hands, he glowed a little bit, and he put his palms on his console, and it immediately turned into the Borg symbols. Because, you know, he has nanite hands now. And oh, the God. beam, when it shoots out, it just in the core of it is green. Good. Oh, jeez. Fun. <laughs> 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 he was like, whoa, I can't read this console now. Hmm. That's a problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, that is uh, Deep Space Data. Or why do I keep thinking Data List Cerberus? <laughs> uh, the <laughs> next up is going to be the little blue dot Gemitar attack ship. And uh, it's pretty basic. Just going to shoot at the Dark Royal. So let's see what happens. Uh, yeah. that is a uh, success. So oh. you're getting hit by the phase Polaron beam, which is going to bypass all your resistance. So I'm going to be even eviler. I'm going to spend one momentum or one threat, I should say, to reroll those four zeros. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so that is a total of uh, seven damage which is enough to go through your entire shields. So you're suffering two breaches here, but you're fine. You have a new talent. You'll be fine. Uh, so engines, so you lose two power immediately. And engines, you lose another two power immediately. Oh. Is Dominus on the bridge of Deep Space 15 at this point? Uh-huh. I'd say so, yeah. I'm going to turn to Dominus and said, the Crusader said something about a changeling. Care to explain? Yeah, open hailing frequencies. Okay. okay. Now I would say that this would count as your uh, action for this round. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's worth it at this point. So. <laughs> okay. okay. So that's what, two momentum for that? No, just oh, it is okay. your turn. So. Oh, okay, cool. That's fine. I th- yeah, open hailing frequencies, I believe, is a difficulty zero task? Yep, it's a difficulty of zero, uh, control engineering assisted by the ship's communications and engineering. But you know what I just realized? Because isolytic weapons have been fired, communications are out. Oh, yeah, I forgot oh, about good. that. I totally forgot about that. So, yeah, you try to hail, and this won't take up your turn, but you try to hail, you're not reaching the Dark Royal, you're not reaching anyone in the nebula. You can't get a hail out on any channel or any frequency. There is so much subspace interference that you are fighting in the dark. Okay, so can okay, so Keevan is somewhere else on the station. Am I able to just like tap my comm badge and talk to him or no? Yeah, in inside your ship, you can communicate. You just can't tell the Dark Royal, like, hey, focus on this ship, or okay. I'm going to shoot this one. Gotcha. Captain Crawford to Lieutenant Commander Keevan. Yes, sir. We tried to communicate, but we're going dark. Um, try to bring shields back up if you can. We still have them, but I'd like them to be stronger. I shall do what I can, sir. All right, now Keevan has already acted. I think the oh, only right. one on Cerberus that has not acted is uh, Dolrum. Yes, it is me. And now that I'm finally on the um, the con, <laughs> well, yeah, up up in ops, would the station have two uh, weapons stations? Yeah, yeah, I I think it's safe to say that it does. Okay, I'm. Let's. We did the scan for weakness on the um, one with the hex, correct? Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, the one that was strong as hell for some reason. Yep, right. the destroyer with the isolytic weapons. That's. 
Is that considered medium? Yeah, it's That's, medium. Okay. Then I'm going to uh, fire phasers at it. Okay. Control security and the ship or the station will assist you with a uh, weapon security. Oh, I will roll for the station. So that's weapons and security. I'm going to give you a threat for a third die. I will take a threat. Because for some reason. Because I... uh, the station helps. And I most definitely still have a focus. Nice. I'm going to re-roll that zero. That's nice. Which means you get one momentum. And I you have the option of re-rolling, if I remember correctly. Yep, re-rolling the zero. All right, no no help there. But hey, you still get the one momentum. Yeah, go ahead and uh, roll me some damage on your phasers. So, obviously, shave off resistance with the Versal, too. Yes. Um, and it's what is the station phasers? It's uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Do we still? Oh my god! Holy cow! <laughs> Billy. Here's my question: Do we still have the vicious one from Demos's thing, or is that just for the one shot? Um, that's a good question. And Demos just wandered away. So I'm gonna no. rule that it's for the one shot. Yeah, I think so. Just in the moment. All right, so how you're spending the versatile two on shaving off four resistance, yes? Yes. Okay. So that does that much damage. So you punch it with the uh, station's phasers. Unfortunately, it does not take the shields down on the destroyer. Still causes a nice breach, but uh, yeah, the uh, the shields on this destroyer are apparently tougher than the battleships for whatever reason. <laughs> But it does lose a turn, so I have to now I have to up it in the turn order. All right, uh, which means as I figure out where that is, up next, uh, one of the green. Now let's have the blue dot uh, Gemini battleship move up. They're uh, they're just gonna move right here, just just chilling. I and see a now... target. Yeah, I was gonna that say helps. now it is the Dark Royals' turn. Uh, ramming, or should I show it the power of our rail guns? Yes. <laughs> Can, you do both? Can we do both? You would have to swift task, but it is possible. Shoot. I just should need to know ram which and one shoot? you're doing first. I'd say ram, and then once you're kissing the underbelly of that ship, blow it with the damn rail guns. We're ramming. We're going to ram it. Oh, God. All right. So this is going to be a oh. daring and con from Kragath. And the Dark Royal will assist you with an engines con. Why don't we have Koros grab that one? And this is a difficulty of two. Not like engines con as in ship. <laughs> yep. Now I pray for the first roll of the night that I do. Don't fail. <laughs> you just narrator. <laughs> he failed. Should, <laughs> should, should I actually uh, spend more momentum so that way I could just have the reroll just in case? Yeah, four, might as well. Yeah, I'll spend one so I have three. Does ship always have focus? It does, yeah, it yes. Does. Oh! Oh! Nice! nice. Yes. That is, uh, yeah, you are capped on momentum and you have one floating. So you probably want to use the one floating for either uh, piercing or for um, for rerolling zeros, but you are rolling a grand total of six challenge die and uh, it has spread and vicious one. I will put piercing on there so we just completely Shrek its just ignore all its defenses. Well, so the momentum spent on piercing only takes off two per point you spend. That That's still nice. Just take away two, two. off of there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll spend the floating one to pierce. Okay. All right. So that is a total of uh, eight damage. Do you want to mess with that at all? Uh, How much do we roll the two zeros? Uh, just, just one. one. I'll burn that one. 
All right, so that's now a grand total of 12. So uh, with its resistance, I'm going to move you. Just I'm going to move. You're still in close range. I'm just going to move you so I can actually get to the battleship. All right, so that's 12 damage. Uh, It has that much resistance. You've gotten rid of two of it, so it now does that much damage. So you slam into the battleship, and uh, the shields immediately rebuff you, but you can tell just on your readouts and your sensors that uh, you've knocked down half their shields. And they have time for the range. Uh, How many breaches? Just the one. Actually, no, two because of spread. So their shields are actually three fourths of the way down. I don't like it being three fourths. Let's take it all the way down. Okay, now <laughs> if you are going to swift task and fire that rail gun, it is two momentum. Are you guys fine with that? I'm fine with that, sure. yeah. Sure. Are you fine with me giving him three momentum to completely and utterly shrek this battleship? Unleash hell. <laughs> I so mean, two momentum for the sort of attack that that would be all of our momentum, but no, 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 no. no you're saying I giving him, him three, three fret for right. was it extra dice? I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. No, not not extra dice actually. Oh, what would it be for? Question. <laughs> Full spread maximum yield. If I salvo, I add the devastating attack momentum spend, even without spending the momentum. Oh. Uh... Hmm. I am a fan of full spread maximum yield, so I'm going to say yes, but I'll leave it to majority. <laughs> I'm okay with uh, I'm a de- very decisive blow. Make yes. go boom. It, it's uh, as though I spent two momentum on devastating attack momentum spend. Yeah, I noted. I noted. All right, so salvo. Salvo. Click, over. click, boom. All right, so I get the three threat. You're going to be rolling a, uh, for the Cornet Railgun, you are going to be rolling a control and a security. And uh, I need you to, let's have Cross, let's have you do the ship again, weapon security from the ship. And uh, I would recommend hitting because I'm going to spend the three threat you just gave me to increase the complication range uh, to a 17 to 20. I'm so going to a complication from the Dark Royal. I'm going to spend one moment, one momentum to get a third dice, so I can fire off my cautious security. Okay. Noted. All right. Well, you don't really need it, but you get three successes, which is what you need to hit it. Uh, unfortunately, I can't rid- get rid of that complication. Yep, you're stuck with it. And I have exactly, I know exactly what's going to happen, and McCall's going to love it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, go ahead and roll me some damage. I believe it is a uh, seven challenge die with your, or no, because you spread, or sorry, you salvoed, so it is eight challenge die. Plus the powerful attack. What does that add to? Uh, the devastating is a quality. Okay, so eight challenge die straight to its face. Mm hmm. Would you like to spend a momentum to re-roll those zeros, or are you going to keep the six? Uh, I I want to leave enough momentum for the rest of the group, so I'll leave it at that. You can't give me threat. I don't want to give you more threat. <laughs> <laughs> I right, gave I you three re-roll. threat. That's enough. I say right, re-roll. So... It's, it's a vicious one weapon. Yeah, it's right. a vicious one and piercing one weapon. Like, uh, Fine. Ooh. Are you guys okay with me giving him, with me giving him threat? Yes. Okay, I'll it give had him, such a beautiful face to destroy it. All right, so you're rolling those three zeros. So Dang it, not much. Well, it still helps because, first off, when you fire your salvo, the eyes of the Dark Royal light up as neutronium shells rocket out and slam into the Jem'Hadar battleship. And it causes enough breaches that it's out for this round. But what really happens is one of the shells over-penetrates and keeps flying out into space. And it's right about then that the USS Lunette makes an appearance. No. (laughs) And the Lunette just goes, I'm here. Bernie Jill says, I'm here, everybody. I'm here. Why can't I hear any? What is that flying towards? And then the shell slams into the Lunette. 
dealing how much shield does the Luna have? Oh my god. Oh, no. <laughs> just right. kill someone. I, I just want to say Isaac Newton is a deadly son of a bitch. Uh, Lunette has Isaac Newton a significant amount surprisingly. Beautiful. Yeah, because it has a blade of armor. Ah. Okay. It has uh, 13. Okay, so it has 13 shields. That is a grand total. You. It has a blade of armor, so its resistance is 5. The resistance is reduced by two, so it's a dis resistance of three. So if I do my math properly, the lunette takes seven shield and a breach. <laughs> don't say breach. Don't say breach. Great and uh, how much power does the lunette have out of curiosity? I believe it has nine. Nine? I'm nine? Okay. It just wasn't uh, on the token. All 12, right, actually. so I now get to roll for the lunette. Oh, dear. Oh, oh. oh dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Goodbye, Bernie. So, Bernie JL is like, why can't I hear? What is that flying towards? Oh, my God. And then his chair just explodes. And we see the, the body of Bernie JL just lying <laughs> over the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> this death has no emotional value. <laughs> it has none. It has, as much, it has as much emotional value as Bernie Jail did. <laughs> <laughs> so that happened. Yeah. And that is all true. It's uh, the Jem'Hadar's turn, and they're like, what the fuck did they... Well, we have a new target to shoot at, so Pink is going to shoot at the Lunette. Uh, it doesn't actually hit. Misses completely. Huzzah. So we go back to the Dark Royal. I believe, Karas, you're the only one that hasn't acted yet. Uh, Zaz hasn't acted. Ah, Please I Please get our shields then. back online. Oh, yeah. No, no Zaz, do repair. We yeah, repair. Because if you repair with your new talent, you actually get to repair right. a breach. Correct. And we have momentum, so that's good. Mm -hmm. So repairing uh, for you... Uh, you either have the option of doing it yourself or using your engineering team to do it. All right, I'll do this one. I'll okay, the then it's going to be either a control or a daring plus engineering. We'll do the control engineering. Okay. And the difficulty is a two here. And I will pop my determination okay. of... Every problem, the solution. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's uh, three successes. So you get a momentum. And yeah, you are able to repair a entire breach and more if you spend momentum. And we will use... Let's see, the momentum with the, our new ability, a little floaty. Basically, when you, uh, or so you could repair all of your breaches. Well, you could repair two of your breaches by giving me the two momentum you just got. Or the two momentum that, that you have currently, I should say. Right, and we'll just have the, the third one. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Do you want so to take have, away the two three. engines, the structure and an engine? Uh, two engines. Two engines. All right, so your engines are back up and running. So what people would see on the station is that cloud that was hanging around the Dark Royal seems to coalesce and strengthen around where it was impacted. And you would see both on sensors and visually that the nanotechnology is already knitting the hull back together. Ooh, it's interesting. Easy so, mode. Yeah. So we uh -huh. have one momentum after that, correct? Yes, you have one momentum. That's what I thought. I was just double checking. All right, so I believe I have a couple more turns, and then uh, because we're not doing full Starship combat, because it would take way too long, so um, we're going to have Green Dot attack ship fire on the Lunette. Apparently the Lunette is uh, unhittable, even with Bernie Jail just sort of chilling on the floor. The blood of Bernie Jail has sanctified the ship and protects it. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, now it is Kuros's turn. So Kuros, what would you like to do? Uh, sensor sweep. Um, can I actually? I can't fire. Can I? If you wanted to fire, you could. It would just be at an increased difficulty. 
Should I fire or should I? What's your security? Release? I want to see Chorus go full carry, soak in the blood of your enemy. <laughs> uh, I would suggest a more level-headed approach. Uh, what what can Chorus do to keep the ship afloat, so to say? Um, all of that would be engineering. Um, but if she wants to bathe in the blood of the enemy, it would be a difficulty of three for the disruptor banks and a difficulty of four for the railgun. Mm. I'm going to search for weaknesses. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'm going to search for weaknesses. Okay. Which ship are you scanning for weakness? Um, which one has been giving us a hard time? Is that That would be blue this dot? blue dot destroyer is the one that really cooked your bacon. Yeah, we'll go after that guy. Okay, now that is a long range, I believe. So that would be a difficulty of three. <laughs> and that is control science, and the ship will assist you with a sensor security. And since it's sensors, I get advantage, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I have the ship. All right, two successes. Unfortunately, not enough. And I'm going to flavor that as being that uh, Karos, again, new ship, new bridge. Sensors are still getting used to this sort of thing. So just not able to get a good lock on the destroyer, unfortunately. I'm yeah. not one for percussive maintenance. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe times will change here after this next salvo. Uh, so the remaining Jem'Hadar attack ship is going to open fire on the Lunette as well. I expect it to miss. It actually hits. Good job. Uh, that is a grand total of... The Lunette is going to take a grand total of six damage, which gets rid of its shields. So that's uh, two breaches. So structure and structure. Oh, so wow. that's three hits to structure. So the lunette structure is now considered, if I remember my rules correctly, uh, the lunette is now considered destroyed. I think. Um, I severely damaged or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was no, it's breaches. damaged right now. If it takes one more, it is destroyed structure. Um, that means the warp core breach. No, that's if it takes engines. Ah. Uh. But good. I like where your head's at. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, yeah, what this means is the resistance has been reduced by one, and there is so many fires and so many hole breaches on the lunette that uh, it's going to take uh, quite a while to fix the, the damage to the lunette. But good news for everybody is that is essentially the end of round one, so I'm just going to go ahead and reset everybody's turns. And while he does that, a couple narrative things happen. Um, so the fr while everyone is busy shooting at each other, um, no one seems t the active sensors don't seem to have noticed a small sphere being deployed from the uh, blue Jem'Hadar destroyer. Uh, this, um, as everyone begins to, or the maelstrom of ships and lasers, um, for a brief second, everyone can see. Everyone becomes immediately transparent, as in you can look at the person right next to you and see their skeletal structure. Um, uh, Dominus, if I could ask you to please roll me a fitness plus medicine test, difficulty three. Okay. Nope, that's Demos. There's Dominus, there's Dominus. <clears throat> uh, fitness medicine, you said? Uh, fitness medicine, yep. Okay. Difficulty three. Difficulty three. And uh, if you have like shape shifting or str uh, f in st uh, how a you know strong of body stuff, tough body stuff like that, that would be a good focus. Uh, I didn't take care of that there because the the talent the mastery gives me like you mimic perfectly. Right. Yep. That's fair. So. Uh... Perception? I don't know. Not in this instance, <laughs> no. So, no, that's fine. No no focus for you. Just not, one. Yep, not enough. Um, so for a very brief second, uh, Dominus, you lose your um, physical cohesion. And you regain it almost instantaneously before you even begin to collapse into a puddle of goo. 
it's like one of those, you know, you're walking for a second, you have a small trip, but you quickly st- steady yourself before anything bad happens. It's like that, mm-hmm. just for your morphogenic matrix. Okay. So, yeah. since he's in ops, do I see that happen? Well, there's a lot of stuff going on. I will allow you to roll a quick... Um, Roll me a insight plus command test, please. Difficulty Ooh. two. Okay. Insight command. That's decent for me. Mm-hmm. Can I do the same thing since I'm also like standing next to Dominus? Yes, but I'm going to bump you to three because you're busy shooting. Fair enough. Okay, so difficulty two. And which? I do yeah. not have a focus. Mm-hmm. So, boop. Oh. Okay. I don't succeed, but Crawford nope. does. Crawford, you do it. So you notice Dominus's, you know, physical structure just sort of liquefy for a split second and then immediately reform. And that. Oh. And I get to roll me a couple tests of my own. Oh, that's a complication. That's another complication. <laughs> that's a critical. Cool. Um, so, uh, Keevan, whereabouts are you? I was roughly at deck 90. Deck 90. Uh, I was basically, yep, the, let's call it the impromptu orbital <laughs> defense state. Okay. Okay, so that's not where uh, he is. Both Keevan and Arya, you receive a... Um, medical teams to engineering or, uh, sorry, medical and en- medical teams to the fusion reactors. Uh, there's been a stabbing. And, stabbing? Yes. Um, and I am going to dump what, what little bit of threat I had and to cause a complication um, as the station loses three power. Good. As there is a um, system as two of your reactors have entered emergency maintenance mode. Excuse me now. <laughs> yep, it looks like that it, um, two of your two of their station's reactors have entered emergency maintenance mode, and that's about as much as you get within this round of combat. Anyways, please take it away again, ELH. I do. Have Alrighty, a let me just crack my knuckles ominously on the microphone. And uh, let's see. Well, I think the battleship that you guys almost one-shotted is uh, a little bit annoyed wait, with you all. Is it back to our turn? Oh, wait, no, because when it goes to another round of combat, it, mm-hmm. it's the enemy first. That's right. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Carry on. So uh, the battleship is going to open fire at point-blank range. It does succeed, dealing a grand total of one, two, three. So that's 11 damage, uh, piercing of six. Which uh, I don't think is enough. So we're going to spend a momentum to reroll those zeros, or a threat, I should say. It has been honor serving with you all. All right, so that is uh, one, two, three, four, five. So ten resistance off. So uh, how do you feel about uh, 14 damage minus whatever you have after resistance? Is this the yellow battleship or the blue one? The yellow one. Okay. Got it. So we have five shields, uh, ten... Ten resistance. So that's, I think, only four damage left after the ten resistance. Well, the ten resistance is knocked off because it has pure setting. Of course, right. Okay. So I think you have zero shields left, which is what matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So you're going to take two breaches here, uh, which means I get to roll system hit. Uh, Your sensors are gone again. (laughs) <laughs> yep. And the structure. Ooh, I get to roll challenge dice again. Oh boy. Oh boy. I get to roll even more challenge dice now. All right. Uh, how many people are on the in ops right now? I think there's only th- well, in terms of player characters, there's only three. That's all I need to hear. Well, this is interesting. I think that would be Demos question mark. It's if actually wanna... going to be Dolrum. So, Dolrum, as the battleship opens fire and the station shields buckle and collapse and uh, a hole is piercing through the uh, quote-unquote saucer section of the station, uh, the EPS conduit next to you uh, explodes and deals a lethal injury to you, 
meaning that unless someone does medical attention to you before the scene ends, you're dead. Just so you know. It also takes you out of combat, so you do, unfortunately, are unable to act unless someone comes over and first aids you. But that's the yellow battleship's turn. It's now the player's turn. Huh. Get him up. So what type of weapon did they, did they fire? They just fired uh, Polaron cannons. Okay, so question. Um, does the isolytic radiation go away so we can communicate now? Or is that like a forever going on thing? That is, as far as I read, for the rest of the scene. Damn. Okay. Now, what I would say is you could attempt to communicate in a more archaic fashion. I I will say at this point, too, as soon as Crawford saw Dominus kind of, like, lose shape for a split second, he has a phaser pulled on him. Okay. Dominus just looks at you like, okay, whatever. Um, Do we know the shields on this ship? Is this still up or down? They're down. You could probably poke them and they'd fall. Do we know that Dominion ships can communicate to each other during isolytic blackouts? You have no idea. Mm. Okay. Well, I'm going to try something stupid. Captain, beam me over to that battleship. Meaning this one, I'm assuming? The one with the down shield, yes. Um, why? <laughs> because hopefully I can talk them to a stand down. Or I start killing the crew and take that ship and ram it into the destroyer. I'll tap my comm badge. Um, C Captain Crawford to Lieutenant Commander Keevan. Yes. Um, who is currently working the transporter room right now? I think that's Ensign Sanyo. All right. Um, if you think it'll help, Captain, go. And then he'll immediately make a call down to Arya. Just like, Dorum's been injured. Well, I also have apparently a stabbing in engineering, which is related to our power loss. Which do you want me to focus on, sir? Um... Yeah, uh, focus on Dolrum. Coming up to the ops now, then. It would be great right. if you had an EMH for the station. Mm. Well, we, 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 we used to, but... Uh, <laughs> we used to. <laughs> but right. our chief of security tried to kill him, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is going to be a power requirement of one. Oh. Your sensors are still down. My sensors are still down. So that's actually a difficulty of three. You can't do... Uh, yeah, so Keevan would have to do a minor action to repair the shield or repair the sensors or restore them anyway. Um, and then it would have to be Keevan doing the role, not the transporter chief. But that would yeah. be Keevan's action for this round. And it's either that or bring up the shields. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to defer to you on that. It's I'm not. I don't think Crawford's kind of more panicking about Dolrum at the moment. So, Jeez, Jesus, Dolrum. As he mutters, as Kevin mutters where he is, and he's going to repair. He's going to fix the sensors, and then he's going to head down, head to the transporter to try to help with the assist or assist in. Okay, now in order to do two minor actions, you would have to give me your one momentum. Because moving throughout the station is a minor action. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Yep. Alright, All right. let's do it. So, you are rolling a control engineering. The station is assisting you with a sensors engineering. The difficulty is three because your destination is not on a transporter pad. But you are also doing this from a transporter room, so the difficulty is down now a two. I'm going to spend three threat to make the complication range a... 
let's call it an 18 to 20. Or is that do 17? A, do we have advanced sensors? We do not on the station. The lunette does, I, but well. Before uh, Keevan rolls, I can actually do something as the captain. I'm not sure if this would be a full action kind of thing or not. But the Loves captain. Uh, the captain can give. Oh, wait, can. Hold on. I need to look at the roll again. Because it's something if like the I, captain can give his point of determination. Yeah, to, as long as you can communicate with somebody, you can give them your determination. Okay, so I can do that for Keevan. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So you have another point of determination, Keevan. And Excellent. It says it yep. doesn't have to be associated with the value, so that's nice. Yep, you literally just give up your determination for somebody else. <clears throat> yep. Now, the first thing is, do I have to do a roll for the restoring the set? No, a, the restore minor action just restores it. It still takes the breach. You still have the breaches, but you basically restore functionality. Okay, that's what, that's what I was figuring. All right, so then, yeah, we're going to do that. And then for the beam over, yeah, we're, I'm going to take the extra determination and I'm going to use it for two automatic success, success. Okay, so all you have to do now is not roll complication. Oh, Jesus. He's beamed into space. Okay, space whale now. <laughs> no pressure. Well, that's right. There would be no pressure in space. Mm -hmm. But so that go. is a complication. Um, and we still need to see the station rolling. And the station, again, is rolling a sensors engineering. I will roll for the station. So sensors engineering. OK, so you get uh, two momentum. But uh, complication. Yeah, I was going to say, either you can give me the momentum, get rid of that complication, or. I feel like we should probably try and buy that off Cerberus people. I don't know. But Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Sure. We'll, we'll spend that two momentum to buy it off. Okay. All right. So, uh, Dominus, you dematerialize and rematerialize on the uh, what functions as the bridge on a Gemhadar battleship. And uh, as you materialize, uh, Gemhadar warriors are already moving from their stations to do something to you. It probably isn't good. I immediately revert into the standard founder look. Oh, well, in that case, they uh, back off and immediately go into uh, genuflecting and offering prayers and say, a founder has come to us in our time of need. Hail the other ships. And uh, one of them runs over to a console and says, uh, we have communication, sir. Stand down now. You and him. Fairly quickly thereafter, uh, Ganless, uh, his voice booms over the uh, your communication systems. Belay that. This one is the God Killer. We seek the other prisoned, uh, the other imprisoned changeling. This one is a can be a casualty of war. And the Gemhadar look at one another and they say, "You're asking us to kill a god." He is asking you to die at the hands of your god if you continue to follow him. This is not a it god. Is... This is a false god. This one is a pretender. A real god would have embraced the Great Link. But no, this one. This one turned his back on the Great Link. On your gods. He is an apostate. I'm inclined to do an opposing presence command here. I, I think, think that, that would be fair. Fair, yep. Yeah. So, I have Ganless' sheet. Mm -hmm. And he has that agent, so he rolls... Let me roll that. I have diffused attention. I think that would apply, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's say the base difficulty is a 2, but for Dominus it would be a difficulty of 1. So that will affect how many successes you could end up with. There we go. Okay. Let's see. Um, and it is a presence command? Yep. Ooh, the two I'm good in. Yeah, so so is he. <laughs> uh, do, do, do. Persuasion. As yep, persuasion would apply. Okay. And? And 
Uh, let's see. So Demos uses his determination. Dominus is going to use his determination. Mm -hmm. uh, do, 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 do. So that's three successes. I am capable. I'm capable of more than what you see. Mm -hmm. So in this case, he is trying to convince them to believe that he is their god. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, step back and see the bigger picture duty before all else or learn to adapt or be left to perish all, would, uh, all would be apply okay using that for the uh, auto crit and yeah oh boy <laughs> so we uh, we have an interesting situation here where you have both the same amount of successes and I was going to give it to Dominus, but with that oh. complication... But wait. so um, Dominus can... has six milestones. Now, before you do that, I have an idea for this. Go for it. So the Jem'Hadar on Dominus's ship begin to say... Begin to side with uh, Dominus. However, over the comm link, Ganlis says, Right, that battleship is no longer ser does no longer serve the proper Dominion. Destroy it and all on board. And there is a self destruct countdown begins. Or could I use my determine uh, my milestone to block that? I would say no, because you used your arc. You used. Your, no. I know you used your arc. You gave us an arc for the Dark Royal. Mm -hmm. I still had. I I never bought an arc with Dominus because we were told that we weren't doing that with the milestones. Didn't so you I, upgrade the Dark Royal, though? I gave my arc to the Dark Royal. Right, so you shouldn't have any milestones left, is what I'm saying. Doesn't it convert down to a spotlight and into a milestone? No, 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 no. If you use uses the arc. Okay, then I still have five milestones saved up from just normal play. <laughs> I th again, this is reputation and milestones, which are not the best rules. Um... Yeah, if you can tell me how one of your past missions applies to this situation, you could use a milestone. Uh, past missions? Like the ones that we've done so far? Or yep. the... Oh, the Zen, the Zen, uh, Zen Kathy encounter. Basically talking them down. Okay. So I'm going to give you control over the battleship. But I am also going to put a three-round uh, self-destruct timer unless you specifically spend some time to defuse it. All right. Any other ships with the shields down? Uh, the blue dot battleship all the way over here. Excellent. Okay. All right. Uh... So that was comprehensive turn. A lot of things happened. <laughs> all right. So uh, up next... Uh, the destroyer is uh, not happy. Not the yellow dot destroyer. The uh, the blue dot destroyer. Yeah. And you know what? Never mind. I think the attack ship's gonna go. Let's let's have the pink attack ship attack. Well, it hits. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's been nice <laughs> knowing the lunette. But, uh, I think that's all she wrote. Oh no. Oh. So the pink dot gem at our ship <laughs> fires its Polaron cannons and tears lunette up like Swiss cheese. And it does there detonate into a million tiny little pieces. Bye, Lynette. Ooh, goodbye, no. Mud. <sighs> well, so, rip. And I, I just want to be clear here: the chain of events was started by a certain someone. Not going to name names. Bernie Jail. <laughs> No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. It would. It was me. I did give him permission to blow it up if he wished, and he wished. Oh, okay. So yeah. In a deep dark part of Crawford's mind, he he just squeezed with glee. <laughs> oh shit! The problem is that Bernie Gel did have an entire training crew on board, so that's about mm, twenty. That's about seventy. Eh, what's the average crew? Probably fifty-ish. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's not going to look good on certain reports later. But uh, hey, good news is it's the, the Dark Royal or the station's turn. I mean, to be fair, they came into a firefight and it, they got caught, caught in the crosshairs. Yeah. And uh, I think to help Dolrum out and to get him back up, uh, Arya's going to run up and do first aid. Yep, Thank sounds you. like a good idea. 
You As grab that the guy with a family is the one that's down. Yeah. All right. Question. So that is a control medicine. Uh, question for you, for your GMs. Yeah. Uh huh. I'm Dominus and Demos. Do I uh -huh. get two turns? Uh huh. Okay. In fact, uh, where is your token? I mean, we're just going to do it this way. Where is Dominus? You chill in space. Where is Demos? Space. Demos also chills in space. Let's give you cool. each turn. Dominus has already used his turn. Yep. Which means Demos. Oh, no, not, not that. Stop it. All right. So, uh, the good news is Arya got you uh, two momentum as she runs up and gets Dolrum back up. And as uh, as Dolrum comes back up, Arya is sort of looming over you and says, Now, what did I say about standing near live EPS conduits? I was, I was trying to save the station. <sighs> Just be aware that I might not be able to save you next time. Noted. I'll never hear yeah. the end of this from a Patu. Oh, was I not supposed to kill him? And she winks at you. In any case, uh, that is going to be the uh, turn of the players. Uh, you spend the two momentum you just got to have another person go. Uh... If you guys are fine, I wouldn't mind going as Demos down to engineering because I can neural link to the station and still fire. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, I don't mind. Yeah, neither do I. Okay. Good. All right, I'm going to take my magic jazz hands and head on down to uh, engineering. Okay. Um, and that's just a minor. You still get a standard once you're there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Okay. Uh, so, the scene in um, the reactors is that there are two engineers um, who have apparently been pierced right through their body with a long cylindrical style of attack. Um, it was um, Engineer Reinhold was the one who called in the attack, but he is not present. Um, the, one of the medical uh, tech, one of the medical nurses is down there analyzing the wounds, and a security guard is already down there making a target s uh, s scans. So if you want to investigate, that'll be your standard action, or you can just tell the station to shoot. Well, uh, I'm gonna tell Rami something. Okay. Initiate protocol, torment of Tantalus. Engaging. Now, for the lay people who don't know your particular style of uh, protocol names, what does that do? False hallways are uh, created by the hollow emitters throughout the stations mm -hmm. to get people turned around and lost in. So they think they know they're going one way, but they're never going to get there. Okay. Um, now, that would typically be an advantage, which, because of the integrated AI, would only cost one momentum. But I don't think you have one at the moment could give you a threat and i will happily give that threat to elh so i'm taking the threat the and very well yeah. the program has be has been activated all personnel are requested uh, all personnel not in transit are requested to stay where they are and i'm having rami try to uh just you know keep me apprised of who's frantically moving around Right. I'm going to spend the two threat you just gave me to make it also a complication that anyone attempting to move well, throughout the station cannot do so with a minor. They must spend their full turn doing so. Fair enough. That's fair. <laughs> but is that Demos' turn? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Well, I have not forgotten about the Dark Royal people. I unfortunately don't have a lunette to shoot at anymore. I was kind of shooting at the lunette, so I didn't have to shoot at the Dark Royal. But I think I got to shoot at the Dark Royal now. <laughs> so, Dark Royal, uh, the Jem'Hadar Destroyer, the blue dot one. Yeah, it's going to use its... Uh, it's actually going to use torpedoes. It's not going to use its isolytic weapons here. So, let's see what happens. Uh, good news is the torpedoes miss you completely. So, uh, good news there. 
And it is now either the Dark Royal or the station's turn. Uh, for the clarification... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was wondering, when, the when does the battleship get to go? The battleship goes on Dima or Dominus's turn. Okay. My question for clarification. What I've heard, uh, Crusader, what was his name? Ganless. No, you would have not have heard any part of that uh, The false god. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right, because our sensors are in yeah. the Isolix stuff. That's right. Okay. Good. Small question. Uh, should I just blast the Gemfandar battleship that's right in front of us? I can always ram it again. Yeah, we could ram it again. <laughs> and if we get momentum, we could do a, another double task. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what? How much momentum? Do we have no momentum? You've or... got nothing. Okay, so what's going to be easier for us to land, the ram or the shot? Well, the shot is a difficulty of three, and the ram is a difficulty of two. But they're yeah. entirely different things. the The shot is weapon security. The ramming is daring con. Yeah, but I have to crit on weapon security to land the uh, rail gun. Well, the ship would assist, so... Oh. Yeah, the ship does assist. I'd say do the ram. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the ram because it's only two less than security control. Okay. So it's still a pretty good shot, and it's a lot less to have to hit. Alrighty, you're going to be doing a daring con, difficulty of two, and cross if you could get the uh, ship's engines con. <laughs> What's the role for the ship? Engines con. Engines con, sorry. I don't know if the thing went through on your end, but I fired the thing off and nothing happened. I don't yeah, see I'm not anything. seeing anything either. Oh, well, there's the Dark Royal. There's the... There it goes. Okay. So, hey, you get a little momentum. And yeah, literally just uh, roll one damage. Well, you can roll six challenge die, but uh, just roll literally one damage. That's all you need to do. Okay, that's enough. So the Dark Royal, uh, the skull in the front of it, pierces through the blue dot battleship and bifurcates it, and the two parts spiral away, spiral away from each other and detonate, completely destroying the battleship. Can I do a minor action? Just Would it be a minor action to just blast off a general signal of me roaring your next to the uh, nearest attack ship? Yeah, you can do that. I do that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think sense communication still isn't working, though. Well, the one thing that occurred to me is that the Dark Royal probably is still using antiquated stuff. So everybody on the field, including the station, just hears, You're next! from Kragan. <laughs> Mortal Kombat theme it starts playing. The, it, <laughs> the Doom theme starts going off. <laughs> Rip and tear. Well, speaking of ripping and tearing, uh, the nearest attack ship, Blue Dot, is uh, just see just saw all of that happen. Uh, will actually miss you completely as it fires frantically in your direction and doesn't I, hit you at all. I think it hearing your next kind of scared the gunman. Mm-hmm. Probably. All right. So we now either have uh, Zazadar, Karas, Dolrum, and who am I missing on Cerberus that hasn't gone yet? Uh, I think Crawford. Crawford, yeah. So any any of those four. I have a yeah. quick question Good. before we move forward. Uh, if I wanted to have the station scan for changeling life signs, or at least something with a morphogenic matrix, since we know that the Dominion ships are looking for that, mm -hmm. what would the difficulty for that be? I believe it is a difficulty of five, if I remember changeling rules correctly. If it's imitating something or someone, it's difficulty five. If it's just moving about on its own, in its liquid form, it, I would call it difficulty two. Gotcha. But the, the point being yeah. is that you would yeah. be basically rolling not knowing what difficulty is. Mm -hmm. Right, right, okay. Hmm. Huh. I guess what we could have just have Keevan try and, you know, restore shields, because that would be nice. Well, Keevan's already acted. Oh, he has? 
Yeah, mm -hmm. I did when I um, helped with the transport. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. My bad, my bad. And um, actually, to bring that up, wouldn't Crawford giving Keevan my, um, his determination been his move, or am I No, as the captain, he can just give it out for free. Oh, cool, nice. Just double-checking. Hmm. I think... Uh... I feel like our best thing might be to have Dorum try and shoot something, but that's the best thing I can think of at this point. I also have a three in engineering, so I could potentially try to do shields, but I don't have any focuses. Right. Well, well I need an answer. Focuses only help towards getting more momentum. Uh, uh, yeah. They allow it easier to crit, but... Mm -hmm. What's the regain shield uh, task? Well... If you are regenerating shields, it is a power requirement of one. It requires a control and an engineering at a difficulty of two, assisted by the station structure engineering. And if you are successful, you regain two points of shields. And then I think there's, and I think there's a momentum spend that's repeatable to get more back, right? It's two more for each momentum spent. Gotcha. And just to double check, is it two or one? I'm looking at the sheet now, or on the rules sheet now, and it says control engineering with difficulty one on region. Uh, there should also be a line that follows that that says a difficulty increases by plus oh. one if the ship's shields are at zero. See, that's why I'm the noob. Thing. <laughs> but no, good point. I'm glad you brought it up. I, uh, if we regain shields, we're only we don't have any momentum, so it only give us two. Uh, shields. If we get mm -hmm. hit again, we're going to get double breached because no shield. It would knock our shields down. That's also true. I'd say Dorm's probably better at shooting things. Let so me. Would... I'm going to just hit the. I'm going to hit the destroyer because this destroyer has already taken a beating. Mm -hmm. It's within medium range. It's within my skill set, and it also takes everything within the reasonable distance out of the play. Making yeah, the dark world. Well, I'm question gonna... is, do you believe? Well, we're gonna find out. I wanna... believe in the heart of the cards. Believe in the me that believes in you. No, no, Gurren Lagann. <laughs> <here, goddammit. laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we're gonna take out the destroyer. I'm All gonna right. give you a. Uh, piece of threat for a third die because I have bold. Okay. Bold security. I'm going to spend uh, that threat and one more to make the difficulty now a three. Oh, oh god almighty. Wow, Dolrum. <laughs> okay. I'm going to use my determination of I must defend my home to re-roll. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please do. <laughs> I'll get still suffering from the injury. I guess. <laughs> he just coughs up blood on the console. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you did do the bold. Does the bold? I have bold. So does bold come into play where I can reroll that zero? I'll say it does. Yeah. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> You'd be great in D and D. Oh <laughs> God! Okay, so what you have success-wise, that is four, five successes, which means you get two momentum. And yeah, literally, what happens is you cough, cough blood all over the console, wipe it away hurriedly, cough more blood, wipe it away again, <laughs> and then you finally hit the right button. Because yeah, the complication was you were hitting the ship that Dominus was on. Yeah, I was avoiding that. <laughs> So, <laughs> versatile for piercing. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and 13 challenge dice. Wow. Mm, very nice. Um, should we reroll the zeros? You said spread, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, sure, let's reroll no. the zeros. Or let's, no. Yeah, it was spread effect to, for... Uh, Yes, I was thinking it was confusing the spread and area. So spread, let's re-roll the three zeros. Okay, that is momentum cost. Uh, 
Ooh, okay. 17. Nice. nice. So the good news is uh, your phaser fires out, takes out its shields, does a uh, good old pierce through the hole, but, uh, you know, not quite enough to take it out completely. Of course, it's going to lose its turn this round, but uh, probably, you know, one more good hit, it's gone. Probably. And who is next? Who has not moved at this point? I guess the Jem'Hadar attack ships. And then we have Karas and Zazadar on the Dark Royal. All right. So attack ship uh, Yellow Dot is going to fire at the Dark Royal. Will miss completely. And it is either uh, Zazadar or Karas's turn. Hey, hey Karas, let me go because I'm going to try to... Now, we don't have shields on the Dark Royal. I mean, you still qualify still... as shields, quote unquote. You just breach at four instead of five. Okay, so you I basically to... repolarize the hull, quote unquote. Okay, good. That's what I need to do, and I'm going to take that one momentum because I have cautious engineering. Ooh, very nice. Yeah, this is going to be a uh, control engineering for you and uh, Karas. If you could do a structure engineering from the ship. All right, well, you already got the two successes you need. You could re-roll that zero for a chance at more momentum. He does have cautious. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's on the way. And control. There All right, go. so you get uh, two momentum, and you immediately do get two shields. And we're going to dump the momentum into shields. Okay, so you get a grand total of six shields. All right, so you repolarize the hull. There's sort of a, a light hum throughout the bridge as the polarized hull plating springs back into action. And not a moment too soon, because green dots can open fire on you. And uh, I'll spend a threat to give him an additional die. Survey says they miss completely. In fact, they roll a complication. So they miss. Tremendously so. They they miss so hard that they almost hit another attack ship. <laughs> but uh, I believe it's just Kuros remaining. Fire Get that weakness. Guns. Say what? <laughs> that Smack it? No, no, no. Weakness on that ship. Okay, okay. <laughs> you didn't All make right. it last time, right? No, I didn't get it last time. Yeah, unfortunately, she did not roll enough successes. All right. So scan it. Yep. So it's going to be a control science. Uh, difficulty of two. Assisted by the ship's sensors security. Nice. Wow. Damn. All right, so you get two momentum. Other one. Yeah, and uh, yeah, based on how you saw the station uh, pierce through the hull of the other destroyer, you make a edumacated guess. Edumacated, it's a word. Uh, <laughs> and you feel like if you shot it in a certain position, you might blow it up in one shot. Also, your um, sensors return Vorta life sign on that ship. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think that's everyone. I think everyone has gone. So, McCall, if you have anything while I'm resetting things. Uh, I don't think Crawford's done anything out on the Deep Space 15 uh, side, but I don't know what he could do. Yeah, I was going to say, if you have something, go for it. Otherwise, I'm just going to start resetting the turn order. Yeah. Um, Because if I remember correctly, the rally task is only once a scene, correct? Or like once a mission, something like that? Uh, it's direct that you can only use once per scene. Okay. So you could rally again if you wanted to, but I am going to require another speech. Get those pom poms out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't oh, really. Yeah. I should be better at this at this point, but I don't know what I could say. Just. Yeah, I can't think of anything, so just reset the turn okay. order. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um... Being honest. All right, so, uh, yeah, I've already reset some of call. If you've got anything before I uh, do round three. Uh, I actually have one. 
Um, Demos, while you're busy scanning the, figuring out what the heck's going on in engineering, um, phaser, uh, you get a call from Dura, and there is phaser fire in the background. Sir, it's penetrated the armory! It, it's got a, it's, it's armed, sir! Understood. Grommy, Tartarus. Already engaged. Well, that's Tantalus. This is Tartarus now. Oh, apologies. Uh, what does Tartarus do? It's a lockdown procedure. All the bulkheads, emergency bulkheads, lock in place, and they only open for registered uh, security members. Okay. Uh, this is so that will be one momentum to create that. However, there will two actually. Uh, not with the station talent. Oh Integra yeah, you're right. You're integrated right. AI. Here. One momentum for. Uh, advantages within the station. Um, <clears throat> but I, the last couple threat I have will go to only security officers or command staff are able to move throughout the station. Everyone else cannot. Okay. <laughs> now that's mixed in with Tantalus. Tantalus and Tartarus. Cool. I've heard it as pretty darn decent sauce. No, that's tartar sauce. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so there's currently a shootout going in um, security office. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll head there. Okay. And that's my narr that's my narration. Okay. So, start around three. I have to make a very difficult decision. What does Yellow Dot Destroyer shoot at? I'm going to roll a D2. If I roll a one, it's shooting the station. If I roll a two, it's shooting the battleship. It's shooting the station. Ooh, thank God. <laughs> Sorry, <right>. Cerberus. <laughs> As we take two more breaches. Mm. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, spend some threat here. I actually have to spend three threat. Actually, I'm going to spend all of it because they are not firing their isolytic. They are firing their torpedo as a salvo. Do we this gain is... momentum? <laughs> no, I have to spend threat. Doesn't work that way. <laughs> Dang. All right, so for the marbles, let's see what we got. Uh, uh, that's not good. No. Let's see. Complication, zero on extra rolls and only one. Yep, so they miss, which is good for you. And, and <laughs> yeah, so the torpedoes miss completely and luckily do not hit the gem in our battleship that Dominus is on. Aww. But that is, uh, that is the destroyer's turn. And I have no more threat. Yeah, I'm out too. So you know, fire at will. That mean we win? No, that just means you need to give us more. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, but hey, it's uh, anyone's on the Dark Royal or anyone on the, I guess on a battleship or anyone on this station. Craig, I, I think it's time to get the Sonam Bitch's shields back up. Craig, um, shoot the destroyer, blue dot, or ram it. You know. What the Dark Royal does. Can we reach it in a ram? Yeah, you're close enough. Part of the ramming action is your movement. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. That's my vote. Get rid of that Horta. <laughs> no, no, Vorta. Hortas we like, Vortas we don't. Ah. <laughs> it's a speech impediment of the Gorn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, tell me, Soup, or is uh, Craggit doing anything? Or did we lose Soup? Oh, I think we lost Soup. No! Rip. Aww. Well, um, I have something to do there with Dominus. Cool, yeah, Dominus, what you got going on? I was going to look to my Gemhadar, look for the first. I was like, where is the Vorta? What ship is he on? He's on that ship, sir, and he points out the Blue Dot Destroyer. Ram it. Full impulse. Sir, we can't reach it in the... Narratively, he says we can't reach it in time. Mechanically, it's extreme range. You can't ram it. Hmm. Now the move you, isn't you, closer to fire out. You could ram the yellow dot destroyer. Yes. In fact, I think you can ram... You can ram either of the yellow dot or the green dot. Uh, what type of weapons do we have, and what's the range? Like, what's our long-range weapon? Well, you have phased polar on beam cannons. Those are close. 
You have phased polar on beam arrays. Those are medium. And you also have uh, photon torpedoes. Those are long. Okay. You know what? I like your idea of ramming. Um, I'm going to grab the first, and we're going to beam back to the station, and the rest of the... Well, we're just going to have someone set a course and ram into the this one. <laughs> okay. We're beaming uh, aboard. I, I am going to require a, uh, a roll. Uh, this is going to be a... Let's do a presence command. Difficulty of four, because you're trying to do transporting away and setting a course for it to ram. Okay. So difficulty four, presence command. And if you succeed, it happens. If you don't succeed, I get threat and something else will happen. Uh, diffuse attention. Uh, diffuse attention is not going to apply here because you are literally ramming something, something else. <laughs> well, I'm trying to make sure that they stay in line. They're staying in line. They think they're your god. You're, they're listening to you. All right. Well, because you don't have any threat, and you know how much I like to give threats to the GM. Mm -hmm. All the beans. All the beans. The beans <laughs> have been dealt. Uh, so what you do you want to focus on? Uh, persuasion, perception, negotiation, diplomacy, small craft, melee weapons. Any, I'll give you a small weapons? craft. Because all craft are small to Dominus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is, wow. Uh, six successes, so you get uh, two momentum. And yeah, what's going to happen is uh, back on uh, Cerberus Station, uh, materializing probably to the alarm of Demos and everybody in ops is a contingent of Jem'Hadar being led by Dominus. As the Jem'Hadar battleship he was just on flies over, impacts the destroyer, and they both explode in a glorious fireball. I will say Dominus looks like a founder. The only caveat is black hair. It's okay, Captain. We're here to help. And Crawford's is speechless at what he just saw. Apparently. As, as is Dolorum going, I okay. completely forgot I was muted. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be another changeling on this ship. I'm scared. <laughs> That's out of character. That's not Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> so how many Dominion uh, Gem Hadari do I have with me now? You got ten. <clears throat> nice. All right, well, is nothing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, if uh, he doesn't have anything to follow up, I'm just going to go ahead and move on. So, uh, Jem'Hadar Destroyer Blue Dot is uh, seeing the Dark Royal B, and uh, it's going to spend some beans here. So it's going to spend three. <laughs> you have damned us, happens. Captain. You have damned us. I also have well, momentum. <laughs> I have good news and I have bad news, and I did clear this with McCall before. I'm spending the remaining three threat because what's happening is as the uh, isolated race slams into you, taking out your shields completely, so you're actually going to suffer three breaches here. Uh, what happens is the isolated array tears subspace in such a way that a full subspace tear begins to open up. Meaning that, uh, yeah, subspace communications, warp travel, everything in subspace is no, no bueno. But let's roll those uh, breaches to see what happens with the Dark Royal. So weapons, structure, structure, which means i got to roll two challenge die. Oh, boy. Oh, Jesus. Boy. So, Cross. Uh... Yep. Cross, you know how you put things, or was it Zazar that put things underneath Kragath Station? Yeah, those go off, and Zazadar gets hit as well. So what happens, Cross, is one moment you are just sitting fine on the bridge. The next thing you know, there's explosions behind you. You turn to look. Kragath is on the ground. Uh, Zazadar is on the ground. You and Hev are up, and you probably want to do first aid as soon as possible. Uh, can I burn my determination to simply ignore death? 
I will say yes, but remember with the termination, <laughs> if you take any injury until the end of this session, you are dead for good. That is sort of the caveat to determination ignoring. Now because... you can't give me two momentum and you would be able to ignore it, but I would have to roll some stress damage. Because I don't have my determination right now. My question early. is if if the Jem'Hadar's leader gets taken out, will the mm -hmm. Jem'Hadar give up? Conceivably. I am going to... Hmm. Small question. Can Chorus and Hiev get me and the Engineer up in time for us to make a turn? It's possible, but they're probably... The attack ships are probably going to fire on you before they finish. And weapons have a damage, so that'll be an additional difficulty. Mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking about shooting the rail guns. Just no oh, ramming. Of course. But we only have five energy left. Five fire. Yeah, we're going to have to... Each ram cost one. I don't know if the Jem'Hadar are going to keep on attacking a ship that's clearly being just absolutely shredded by their destroyer, though. I think they would want to go for their main target, considering the Dark Row looks like it's being handled. Uh, this is this is tactically a really bad, bad you moment. You also pull back. Let me know, Sue. Okay. I th hmm... I want to end this fight as soon as possible, but I don't know if we can. Just tactically reposition yourself uh, behind uh, the enemies or further away from the enemies. Because what I was thinking is moving six boards or right on the Gem Hadar destroyer and immediately swift action slamming them to try and kill them. Well, I mean, part of the, the ramming is you do the move. Well, move, swift, swift action, ram. Right, what I'm saying, though, is the ramming action has a built-in movement aspect to it. Ah. So technically, we could ram them From where right you are, now. yes. It would be a difficulty of four, but you could do it. You also have three momentum. Do you believe in yourself? You know I don't believe in myself, because I have the absolute monkey paw luck. But do you believe in the heart of the cards? Okay, no, so not... I literally just rolled three crit fails and somehow managed to succeed still. <laughs> Thank you, Determination, um... and rerolls. <laughs> okay. How would we let you think that to... so we can keep things going? Well, it's one of those things where I need to know the res whether or not this is happening because the this will resolve combat one way or another. Do you guys believe in the heart of the cards? Yes. Yes. I believe in chaos. Are are you willing to allow me to burn all the momentum for the Hail Mary? Sure. Yeah. Sure. sure. What's the worst that could happen? I die. Really? <laughs> I knocked on wood. I'm hey, not that's, on wood. that's my go-to line. So, well, question though. Are hmm. you using your determination to stay alive? He has to. Yeah, I would have to. And what about Zaz? Zaz can get medical treatment. Yeah, I don't have my determination. I failed my veteran check. Okay. I'm going to use my determination with uh, my value. I have no weakness nor blind spot. It's mm, good value. Therefore, I am ignoring my absolutely gaping wound in my side. All right. And well. I and I roar into. I just roar, ram them. All right. So I need a daring con from Kragath, and I need the Dark Royal to do an engines con. The difficulty is four. You're rolling I'm... four dice. Yep, I'm rolling four. No help from the Dark Royal. To be fair, Cars have been rolling sixes. <laughs> uh, do we have any way of re-rolling one of these dice? You would have to challenge a value to get a point of determination. Meaning that the value is something you replace at the end of the session. I'll actually burn he who acts first dies last. Okay. Because and, we've been uh, going last this entire time. 
Fair enough. <laughs> so just remember to change it in the Dark Royal game, not this one, because the Dark Royal is the one that will have the changes. Um, but okay, so that gives you your determination back. So you, I'm assuming you're using it to reroll that zero. Uh, yes. Okay. So again, for all the marbles, let's say that one zero. We don't want to see a zero. We want to see a one. Well, yeah, you want to see a one. <laughs> there it is. Hey! <laughs> yes. Nice. So because Karas did the scan for weakness earlier, when the Dark Royal slams into the destroyer, it does so in such a way that instead of two pieces or three pieces or four pieces, it's like you hit a confetti bomb and the destroyer just eviscerates and evaporates underneath the skull of the Dark Royal. And as soon as that happens, the remaining attack ships uh, begin to depart one by one at full impulse. If you want to pursue them, you can. Uh, but for good measure, uh, the attack ship B, the, the lone attack ship that remains, uh, just sort of uh, sends out a broadcast that says, we have not forgotten this before it runs away. Gallant. And that is the end of my co-GMing, so I'm going to give it back to McCall. Well done. Well done indeed, ELH. I'm going to need lots of stitches. Okay, Oop. so uh, Dark Royal oh, folks that. need medical attention. A bunch of people on the station need medical attention. The station needs well, both ships need engineering attention. <laughs> Okay, so there's currently a shootout going on. Uh, there is Dominus on the bridge with several Jem'Hadar, so let's deal with that first. Um, operations has no Demos or Midas, but several. Okay, what do you guys want to talk about here? Oh, I make sure that the Dominion have laid down the weapons. And they do so with... Oh, it would help if I was in the right layer. And they do so. Captain, we, I see you in your ready room. You may. And yeah, I'll head on in. Okay. I'm like, do not attack anyone. Just stay where you are. Uh, at this point, um... Daldrum, you're still receiving reports of phaser fire coming from security. Before they go into the ready room, I turn to the captain. Captain, we're still getting phaser fire on the station. It's um, coming from the engineering levels. Uh, security. Security levels. All right, coordinate any amount of security offers you can and get the hell down there. Will do as I hobble up and grab a phaser and head on down. Okay, and because I want to sort of resolve what is going on in security first, I will say that Dura's down there, right? Dura's there, du um, Durum, Durum, Demos, and Daldrum. Yeah, that's uh, we have a lot of the D team. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, security. Service levels. is big on the D. Yeah. Uh huh. Thank you. No. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so. You I want to give two threat to McCall for that pun. Okay. <laughs> also have Thank you, Dusk. Guys. You know, we got we got a lot of D names. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So everyone is everyone has taken up tactical positions along the hallway as Demos and uh, Dalrum arrive on station. Dual reports, sir. Current last last we know it was held up in the armory. It's a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It, uh, it's her it's a hermetically sealed environment, sir. So only one way in, one way out, and it wants to come horrible out. Horrible idea, Rami. Yes, Demos. Since the armory is hermetically sealed, I'm guessing it has its own life support. Yes, sir. Increased gravity, two hundred percent. Yes, sir. Gravity has been. Um, just because the station suffered so much damage, I'm going to make this a test. Um, okay. let's, yeah, roll me daring plus security and the ship or the station will assist with st structure plus security. Actually, structure plus engineering. What's the difficulty? Difficulty is going to be a two. Okay. Uh, Starfleet tactical systems? 
in this instance, yeah, I'll let that go. Alright. I'll give you one threat for an extra dice. Cool. Boop. Okay. That's uh and you said it and you said it was what for the station? Uh structure. Uh structure plus engineering. Structure engineering. Okay. Okay, that's three momentum. Cool. Uh, Keevan, your alert panels just flash up another couple warning lights as m the mass of the security deck increases significantly. Blows out a couple capacitors, but gravity has increased by uh, 200%. Let's go and knock on the door. He's like, Hello? There's currently no response. Can you gurgle something? Yeah. Let me out. Well, what are you first? Because the fact that you're still talking at this high gravity means that you're tough. <laughs> I am a founder. Oh, well. Looks like I found you. Congratulations. Now let me out. No, you shot up my station and we got attacked because of, I'm guessing, you. Here. They restored my memories. Yes. Okay. Sr Who? Yep, that fla the flash of the flash of darkness. I had reverted to mortal form as penance much like many of my kind. The light freed me. Rem reminded me of my hatred. Now let me so, out! So, what you're saying makes me not inclined to let you out. Mm -hmm. Now, you can handle 200% gravity increase, but uh, what if I do another, I don't know, 300%? Uh, How do you think you'd like that? Could you please roll me fitness security, please? Uh, this is going to be an opposed roll to what I just rolled, which is four successes. Oh. Uh, then I will give you another threat for another dice. Okay. We have three momentum. And Oh, yeah, we do. We do. You know what? I'll take that threat back and I'll, I'll can I use oh. the three momentum to buy two more dice. Sure. Okay. Um, any of my focuses apply? Um, probably not. Do you have something about, like, endurance or holding position? Or immovable? Mm. Something like that would work. But I have force fields. Not in, no, <laughs> no, not this time. No, no, alright. <clears throat> hey, yeah. Oh, oh boy. Oh, fun. Okay. Do you have a reroll? Mm, was the station assisted at all my way? No, not this one. No? Nope. I'm just going to roll me some challenge dice because I think it's funny. Okay, uh, you take two stress as the doors burst open upon you and a large elephant-like creature barges through the hallways and starts trampling down security. I know, oh, can I... Firing. Yeah. I'm going to start firing, too. Okay. Yeah, Dara's doing the same. Okay. Um, the um, fuck? <laughs> so, I'm, I'm going to do something fun, because mm -hmm. I think it'll be funny. Uh, Demos, like, before he'll reach behind from, from his back, and he's going to pull out his big old machine gun as soon as that thing gets, um, as, as it's within close range, and he's going to fire. Okay, so uh, anyone who wants to fire may now roll a... Uh, roll me a control security, please. I got two successes. Nice. Let's see. Two hmm. successes. Nice. Let's see. Uh, since I know this thing is the founder, if I wanted to pop Dura's determination for... I'll always rise to the challenge because we're kind of fighting a founder. I will. For two successes. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. 
And I have a focus. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh. Hi, Dura. Coming to the table, aren't we? So you guys are basically just firing Dura battle jumps onto a table and begins hip firing her phaser rifle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Good god. That's a uh... Yeah, four successes Impressive. for Dura. Nice, nice. I think that caps you on That's momentum. That's six because I popped a termination. Yeah. yeah, but that six successes for for momentum. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, each of you roll me damage. Holy, yeah. Thunderlord. Okay. Ooh, see, so that I got five. So... Demos got seven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because um, a phaser rifle is what for damage? I think is it four plus security? Yeah, four security. Four plus. I also... just had my type two. Mm -hmm. Thunderlord has knocked down. Okay. Um, I'm going to reroll. Spend a momentum to reroll those zeros. And can I do piercing after damage, or is that not a thing? I have to like declare. No, nope, you got to declare charge as a minor action before mm -hmm. you fire. Okay, got it. Okay, yeah. so. so uh, reroll. I will take uh, a momentum to reroll my zero as well. Okay. I was going to do the same, but I was going to wait for everyone to. So let's talking. all just take, let's all do momentum fence rule our zeros. Yes. Well, I only got one additional damage, but that puts me up to six. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where am I? Seven, There's a seven and five. five. Okay. And every effect uh, assist with the knockdown. And okay. Dura got eight. Give me a split second here to double check <laughs> the rules here. I believe that they were. This is like a guy trying to escape a room with a cardboard box in front of a firing squad, and they're just <laughs> lighting him up. Well, I mean, to be fair, he's not in a cardboard box, but yeah. He is an elephant. Guys, we got to talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> ah. No. <laughs> one would think that they would have been immune, but nope. Okay, so each one of you, just because there's so many numbers on the screen, so Dura, what did you roll for damage total? I rolled. Eight damage. Eight damage total. Okay, let me just make a note here. Eight damage total. Demos, what did you roll? In total, 12 damage. 12. And there's five effects for knockdown. Oof. Okay, so that is... Okay, so that is that. And... Uh, Dolrum? Six standard damage. Six, okay. So... And apparently that is okay. So it uh, it absorbs a lot of it just because it is a founder, and due to their changeling nature, they have a high resistance. Um, however, Demos's um, assault cannon <laughs> does enough damage to cause it to, as the elephant begins charging down the hallway towards uh, Dura and uh, Lieutenant Tiem. Uh, Demos brushes the door behind him, materializes a gun, and lets out a concussive blast of energy, which basically turns the elephant into a fr uh, front-rolling... Uh, begins a quick end-over-end -end roll for the elephant. It quickly... um. Uh, loses cohesion, and how? And it did. Well, it was enough for it to suffer an injury. How much hit points did this thing have? That would have been. Oh wow! It's actually still. Nope. That it is actually still up, but it is currently reforming. And it does so at a minor action. And for its turn, it is going to attempt to uh, flee. And it is going to do so. Or it's going to try anyways. Let's roll its fitness security. Because we have advantage on lockdown right now. You do, yes. Um, normally that would... Inc in this instance, because it's a liquid form, it gets a little bit more leeway of what it can do. But yes, it... I am adding an extra degree of difficulty for its attempting to escape. Uh, it attempts to jump up through a, a vent that is slightly 
or possibly inconveniently located near the ladder shaft here. Um, however, it bang it slams into a force field and is remains as a pool of gelatinous goop. Um, as it realizes where it is and that it has a very difficult choice to make, it says, I surrender. Good. Genda's container. We won't harm you as long as you cooperate. Uh, considering how much you just damaged it, I'm going to forego the um, present security role for intimidation. <laughs> and it not happily complies and gets itself into a translucent container typically used to ship um, Gatorade to sporting events. <laughs> may, uh, may I ask you a question? Talking to the liquid in the bottle, if it can still speak. It manifests a, it manifests a masculine face that looks sort of familiar, but it's difficult to really nail down in its current form. What you, s you said you were punished to be immortal earlier. Who? I guess the real question would be, who were you? You may call me Vala. And the Great Link saw its progenitor destroyed. And it took, and it collectively took an oath of penance. We each vowed to leave the commune until such time that our penance was served. That the that we would once again be found and the Great Link could be reborn. Nothing you'd understand, of course. But it feels good to say it. I mean, it's great that your name is Vala. I don't think there's anybody here on the station named that, looking to Demos. You would probably rec you would recognize the name Holmquist better. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come here, you. I'm just going to put the lid on and put him in another <laughs> container. Like Rami, maximum containment field, full power. Yes, um, acknowledged. I had to, I had to dust off the security protocols for Changeling security. Haven't these have not been updated in thirty years? I would recommend that they be reevaluated. Yes, uh, Dura, TM, Dorm, you should all get your ears checked. This gun's loud. Noted. Okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> Demos to Ops. This is Captain Crawford. Go ahead. Uh, we found a founder. Apparently it's Home Quest. It's contained right now. I have given it my word that we won't harm it and we'll try to help it. Understood. You can see the box shaking like a Pokeball <laughs> from the Nintendo games. But, I enjoy oh, yeah. that imagery. It's not getting out. Robbie, play HomeQuest's favorite songs for this guest. Understandable. Or, yes, sir. I am... What is K-pop? <laughs> I have no clue. I'm interested in it now, too. Very well. And if each of you could please roll me a fitness security test, please, against uh, shrilling, uh, shrill, upbeat <laughs> dance music. Oh, I deactivate. Oh. I just fall face. <laughs> I just, I just leave the security. Ah, <laughs> uh, you don't have to. Okay. So that I get one. Yeah. Uh, you're not quick enough to uh, clasp your hands to your ears, Dalrum, and you find one of your feet starting to tap uncontrollably. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Dalrum, uh, let's do the... So, uh, lots of injured on the uh, Dark Royal. Uh, how is the station going to assist the Dark Royal? Or what's the Dark Royal folks going to do? Well, I'd like to imagine that, uh, Karas, you've applied medical knowledge to Zazadar. Zazadar, you are waking up to the bright, eager face of Koros. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! 
what I just saw a, a trap and rocks come flying at me. Why did the captain have me put those up here in the bridge? So it was you. <laughs> you were the one who put those up there. They were missing before. Next time, do not. No matter what the captain says. I agree. <laughs> now, if you, if I could get some string and a needle to stitch my side up. You can't growl it into place? Cornets do not have the regeneration of your species. Yeah, yeah, that's what we have. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, can I do some meatball surgery on our, <laughs> our good engineer? Absolutely. Can you sew scales? Um, he can try. <laughs> we I start mean, pulling out a knife as a needle. It's like, no, 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 no. If I'm familiar enough with reptilian art, biology, I think scales are a protective coating over skin. So... You, I mean, the scales will take some time to grow back. I think that's how that works. But that yes. is how it works. Yes. Also, I have the focus combat medicine, so I 100% can do meatball surgery on you. Then, ah, uh, uh, yeah. I think I am good for now. Oh, but then again, we have our own coronate doctor. That's almost as bad, I guess. On scar. <laughs> he is uh, not as bad as the other one. Uh, thank you, Master at Arms, but I will go see the doctor. Please make sure it's Sawbones, not the other one in there. You trust me on this one. Sawbones, yes, yes. Uh, okay. uh, does he notice I have a big gaping hole in my side? I mean, it's hard to miss. Uh, I'm just going to look at Koras and, and, like, do the can't, can't get me something to stitch myself up gesture. Uh, y yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll be right on that. We have some sealant in engineering that can that work. Is, that is corrosive to the skin. <laughs> but it does seal. Yes, but it will cause more damage than the good. Um, I thought you wouldn't get get to the doctor. Tell me if it's some bones in there or it's, it's the blue one. If you see the blue one, run. So I'll head down to the to, to sick bay and is it the blue one or the other one? Whichever one you want. Roll sawbones. the dice. One, it's a Sawbones. Two, it's the blue one. That would be a... Challenge dice? Uh, uh, that would be... Oh. Uh, it's apparently Sawbones. Thank God. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> okay. So that pretty much takes uh, Craigeth out for a little bit. Uh, Sawbones begins... Does, is Sawbones known for his use of anesthetic? Yeah, what's no. That? Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a coordinate shift. They don't have the word anesthetic in the vocabulary. Duly noted. And they have, I believe they have I'm actually still... The forehead. On... I believe I'm actually still... It's the engineer that went down to get himself treated by an actual doctor. I believe I'm still on the uh, bridge actually trying to suture myself up. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, that would be a control plus medicine difficulty of three. Now, if you get a complication, that's stress. Yeah. Uh, I uh, I actually can just uh, use the talent combat medic. Oh, okay then. I heal myself equal to my uh, medicine score. Well, Perfect. I think with combat medic, you have to succeed on the task first, right? Um, 
Mm, uh, from what I read, it's just slap the guy on the back and they go. I think it. I think it's some when you perform the first aid task, then you spend the momentum. Maybe. Yeah, it's a uh, control medicine difficulty of one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And extra momentum. When a character attempts first aid task, yep, you may spend one momentum to cause the recipient to regain points of stress equal to the character's medical discipline. So perform first aid and then apply one momentum and you regain that stress of four. And uh, because I got the extra momentum, I'll spend one of that extra momentum just to just to make myself feel good by eating by eating the Skittles or something. <laughs> Perfect. Just get some sugar in my blood. That works well. Okay, so the situation on Dark Royal is stabilizing. Let's have the conversation between captains, shall we? Uh, captain's office. Captain Crawford and Dominus. Captain. Captain, I can't thank you enough for the help you gave. Hmm. Yeah, look, I was actually planning on talking to you and Dollarm at some point about this, but I didn't expect it to happen today. Not like this, anyways. Oh, Freaking Dominion. Pain in my ass. Anyways... So you wanted to talk about the fact that you're a changeling, I'm assuming. Well, yeah, if it's not obvious. I mean, I saw it happen, so. Well, I'm also looking like a founder right now, too, and the, the Jim Hadar are following my orders. So, yeah. Hmm. I'm a changeling. Not one of the founders of the great dumbass Link. One of the 100 is what they call me. Hmm. I was found in Cornet territory on a Outer Rim colony planet. A soldier found me and saw potential and raised me. That was See. over 80 years ago. Hmm. And the Cornet Imperium is aware of what I am. It's one of the reasons why they chose me to do all of this for them. They don't see me as an outsider like you who would see a changeling like... What's his, what's his name? Udo? Uh, uh, Udo? Odo, yes. Udolo, yes. <laughs> yeah. They don't see me as something they could exploit, but they see me as a cornet because I value their beliefs. It's actually not that different from the Dominion in a way. They pride themselves on a certain level of order, but they go about it differently than the Dominion. They don't beat people with it. They try to enlighten people, though. Yes, we have a macabre sense of humor, and we have a more let's say, aggressive approach to diplomacy. But it's worked, and it's served well for as long as the Imperium's been around. But they also didn't feel it was necessary for Starfleet to necessarily know what I am. But it was my discretion to tell those who I felt like I wanted to tell. Which, again, was going to be you and Dulram. And a better and a more controlled environment. Now I well, got these ten Jimadar. <laughs> oh, well, there's them, but I'm the only one on the station who knows. Would you want me to call Dolrum up so you can tell him? Well, he might be a little suspicious of why there's ten Jimadar being peaceful on his operations deck. So, yeah, sure. 
Okay. <laughs> Captain Crawford to Commander Dolrum. This is Dolrum. Make my way to your... Yeah, make your way to my ready room when you can. Sure, would you like me to bring a gift? If you want to? Because he looks like visibly confused at that. <laughs> well, let me just tell you, we figured out what was shooting. I'll oh. explain more when I get up there. <laughs> okay. And I take the canister and I make my way to his the captain's office. Okay. So you have that. And you have brought... Holmquist. <laughs> He's just in a canister. Yeah. As I walk in, I put the canister with the uh, changeling in it on Crawford's desk. I, I will say that when you walk into him, you see a founder with black hair just looking at you. After I put it down, I look around and go, oh boy. Today um, has been an interesting day. That yes. is Dominus. I hate this form. Well, you don't have to hold it for my sake. Yeah, I have to hold it for the guys out there. Ew. And so, what is this, Commander? And he kind of like, Almost like, you know, shakes the liquid a little bit. Well, that right there is who we n know as Ensign Holmquest. I'm sorry? <laughs> Ensign what? Holmquest was the changeling that apparently they were coming after to find. Hmm. I thought they were here for me. Oh boy. So that's an interesting one. And I'm he's going gonna... in our engineering and he's the one that took down our reactors and managed to make a mess of the security offices. I see. You seem like you're about to say something, Dominus? not my first Would... time taking out a member of the Great Link. I can dispose of him if you wish. We could do that. Mm. Or we could keep him as a bargaining chip. I don't think we've seen the last of the Dominion. You don't understand. A changeling is only going to be contained as long as he feels he wants to be contained. We extract our mass from subspace, our own little pocket. That's how we can grow or shrink. He can push against those containments until it starts to fail and give way. Interesting. Huh. Do you mind? May I? By all means. And Crawford will just toss the canister box <laughs> holding home quest over to dominus just toss the canister across the room it's fine yeah and i'm just going to hold my hand and let the canister sink into my arm as i'm completely enveloping it and i'm just trying to make a connection with it okay there. so um have you been in a great link merge before not with another changeling, but he has been with a couple of other species that were similar. Okay. Especially the ones that have left him with the black design to his look. Fair enough. Um, can you please roll me a... Roll me a fitness plus command test, please. And this... Would cold reading apply? I will let that happen, yes. And I need to remember what cold reading does. Uh, let's find out. I have the talent list open. Command, <clears throat> right? Yeah. Cold reading. Uh, let's Cold see. Reading. Succeeding a task during social conflict. I'll let that happen in this case. It generates one momentum, which must be used for the obtain information spend. All right. And I'm going to be 
diplomatic with him. Like, okay. I'm going to try and communicate, like, hey, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. This is going to be a difficulty three test. Right, uh, I'll take a momentum. Mm -hmm. um, can, oh, presence command, you said? Um, fitness plus command. Fitness, thank you. And you'll realize why as soon as I see, tell you what, what happens. Whether you pass or fail. Oh, wow. Okay. That's the three successes you need. Um, so, very similar to Odo's first experience merging with a founder, um, what you... This is a far more intimate bond than you've had with even more previous species. Um, it's the first time ever. It's like tasting a new food and immediately realizing that it's the your most favorite thing in the whole wide world. And However, you feel... You, that's the first instinct that comes into your mind, this, and immediately your built-in personality takes over and realizes that this that too much of a good thing could be a weakness. And you know, so you're not as addicted to the link as Odo was. Um, so, uh, what question do you wish to ask? How did the Dominion find you? How the hell should I? Or It has no idea. All it knows is that when they flashed their light um, that you felt, it, it went from a, a primitive, corp or primitive solid to... and it unlocked all of its memories. And it felt hate and rage. Do you intend to continue the crusade against all solids? No. What it wants to do is... It now has the primal desire to, re to reform the Great Link, finding and liberating others that have been uh, state-locked. He's just going to sever the connection and pull up the caster and put it down. It's like... The feeling of bonding with another changeling is euphoric and quite exhilarating. I absolutely hate it. They sent out a hundred of us to be alone and isolated to see how the galaxy has changed. And yet they think they can win us back by trying to get us hooked onto this connection. This changeling is rather lucky that this station is Federation. If this was Cornette, I would have killed him just like the last time I encountered one of them. He has no intention of harming anyone, not this time. His goal is to re-see the Great Link come back to fruition. If that changes to them coming back to fight, they're going to be horribly and sorely hurting, especially with the cornets at the side of the Federation. Well, we could potentially arrange for him to be transported to the Founders. I would think that's a good idea. And that would be an agreement. I will give the great honor of the transportation delivery to those ten fine Jem'Hadar out there so they don't have to bother me once they're gone. Oh, and I was looking forward to leaving you with Jem'Hadar on the Dark Royal campaign. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to point out you don't have Ketracel White, yeah. so... Yeah, that would have been far more interesting. <laughs> so, if you want to task the Jem'Hadar with that to return to their own space, uh, we could um, we can arrange through S Starfleet's means the safe passage through Federation space. Now it would be quite a while till they can get to the wormhole, simply because of our distance from it. But it's doable. I'm sure it'll be fine. The only concern I would have is any of the races out there learn that there is a changeling 
being transported back to the Gamma Quadrant is that they may attack any vessel they're on. So this would need to be kept rather secret. Hmm. We have to get in contact with the Admiral and disguise it as a normal communications with, like, a secret message underneath it that's encrypted. Or, I have a suggestion, you contact someone that you're already familiar with that is a little bit, let's say, of a sleuth. And as he says that, he turns into Sangral. He is an option, after all. <laughs> I was actually about to bring it up. I had to do it in so much a more fun way, though. You can talk to him, or mock him. Who knows? I'd rather not. I think <laughs> Starfleet Intelligence's operations in this area are about to be very different. Well, Starfleet Intelligence, they're as smart as they, they think they are, but not actually as smart as they hope to be. But they do have a nice habit of keeping secrets, and mum is the word, I believe, is the old expression. I'll be sure to get in contact with Captain Sengral about it. By the way, don't tell him I put his face on. He just gives a smile at Sengral before he shifts back into founder-looking Dominus. Well, I can't really make any promises, and Crawford will wank at Dominus. Uh, and on that note, we are going to cut to sick bay. It's been a little bit of time. Uh, station security, or station engineering is taking its time. It got hit harder than anything else has hit it this, and it's uh, 11 months, I believe, of continual service. Um... However, we are the real stress testers of this station. Yes, yes, you are. Uh, I mean, we've taken hits before, but this was mm -hmm. by far the worst of the hits. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Arya, you, this is the fullest your main infirmary has ever been, but it's also the most somber because there are several bodies here that are currently undergoing the, well, the sad task of, you know, having to be dealt with after being caught on a starship that gets blown up including the s still oddly uh, the oddly preserved corpse of one commander bernie jail and mm. at this point the ca as at this point uh, the captain and Dolrum come in to oversee the just check on for check for status reports and whatever else might happen down here. I assume the person at the front desk would wave you on through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Captain, Commander, what can I do you for? Come to check on how everything's going down here. Well, it's going like shit, but that's the cards we've been dealt. Indeed, we've lost quite a few people today. Do you know how long it have... takes me to write a death certificate and a letter back to the family? No. It takes about three hours per letter. Which means, if I stop doing what I'm doing right now, and start writing all the letters and all the documents to... I might finish by the time the week's done. The thankless job. Well, it would be perhaps not as thankless if I could say something in the letter that would be other than, oh, they died because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time, or oh, they died because momentum's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac Newton strikes again. I can't imagine it's an easy task. 
how to make a few of those letters in my time. Good, because I'm gonna make you do most of them. Cap or doctor's orders, and I just shove a pad in whoever's hands is closest, and it's Bernie probably, Jail. I'll probably say it's Crawford. <laughs> yeah, so it's Bernie Jail. Uh, it's the probably the ten or fifteen higher ranking after jail, and mm-hmm. then area kind of keeps the uh, the lower ranking ensigns and crewmen from there. As far as I'm concerned, Captain, that was your blood. Understandable. And I suppose I need to talk to Starfleet Intelligence because once again, if it's not a Fournette going rogue killing holograms or Borg showing up and taking over our security officer, it's freaking Dominion and an unknown changeling. I feel like they yeah, for all the hope we have in Starfleet Intelligence of preventing this nonsense, it just keeps happening. All that hub outside our windows makes for every day a new and exciting venture around here. You call it exciting, I call it more paperwork. I swear they should develop a syndrome specifically for those of us that spend most of our times cooped up at des- desks with no interaction with the outside world. Almost like a quarantine of some sort. Quarantine syndrome. Paper cuts. Lots and lots of paper cuts. I think What's that's paper? cabin fever. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have our own reports that we need to write. We lost the lunette. Yeah, good luck getting a replacement out this way. Because, uh, last I knew, there weren't exactly a whole lot of replacements that Starfleet could pass around at the moment, especially ones that could make it out this far, even with the Graviton catapult. Right. It might be in our best interest to recall one of the support fleet to have here stationed at the station until we can have another ship. As much as I don't want to hurt the support fleet we need to be able to conduct missions here hmm. well that's your prerogative i don't really deal with that sort of thing that's a dusk thing but uh before you go and she makes it very clear that the conversation is ending before you go tell me did uh dominus tell you about the whole changeling thing yes he did hmm I was wondering if he would. I had a bet with myself whether or not he'd tell you or if uh, Sengral's message to me was just going to sit there unsaid. Well, I actually saw him lose his forms for a second, so I figured it out. Hmm. What are we uh, What are we doing with the whole captured changeling? Are we sending him back? or The plan right now is to send him back with the Dominion crew of the ship that Dominus took control of. Uh, what ship are they going to use? Well, the only ship we have is their own. Uh, no, there's blew up. Yeah, there's kind of blew up. Oh. Yeah. You... Well, it's not like you need runabouts. Just throw them on a runabout and say goodbye to it. It's true. Mm-hmm. Although that it is. <clears throat> Losing another ship in this time would not be fantastic. Then she just sort of shrugs and goes back to start doing uh, treatment on the patients. Then throw them out an airlock. I really don't care. They're not my patients right now. We'll let you get back to work, Commander. Mm Mm-hmm. And she just full, at this point, just full on almost ignoring the two of you. Okay. And that is pretty much where I've run out of plot or scenes that I'd like to see. Is there anything that anyone would like to do with one another before we call the session? Uh, Domus is going to hand a, can- a canister to the first. Mm-hmm. It's like, you are tasked with delivering this sacred individual back to the Gamma Quadrant, to the home world of the founders, and you are to tell this Oto um 
if he wishes to have a line of dialogue with me, he can reach me at the server station, and they will forward any messages. By the way, you are not to engage in combat or fight anyone on your venture back home unless it is self-defense and you are authorized by any commanding officer in a Federation vessel. Do I make myself clear? He bangs his uh, fist against his chest. Or do they do the cross-arm thing? I forget. By the way, it will, it will be done, Founder. Have a good day. He just turns, and he just, like, has the most annoyed look on his face. And he's like, I need to get back to my ship. I need to get back to my ship right now. <laughs> All right. Anyone have anything else they'd like to do? Uh... I can Demos only... Is... Oh, oh, go ahead. Oh, uh... Man, Demos is up for anything if anyone wants to talk with him. <laughs> I was just going to say, it doesn't have to be a scene, but I can only imagine the earful that Dolorum's going to get when he walks through the door and the <laughs> pot is standing there. I'm sorry, you let you let yourself in active combat stand in front of a console with an active EPS conduit behind it? Haven't we been over this? All consoles have EPS units to them. I swear, you know, with all the technology that Starfleet has, you'd think that consoles couldn't explode every now and then. But nope, apparently that has to be a design feature because your Starfleet technology is so arrogant. That's why I like plants. Plants will never explode. Yeah, they may corrode you or itch, possibly cause you poison if you're stupid enough to eat it, but... Uh, and he goes on like this for about five more minutes. In the middle of it, I just turn and give him a kiss. I appreciate that you're worrying about me. I will be fine. He returns it in kind. And then has a rather naughty suggestion for afterwards, but... <laughs> and then... Fade that will black. fade to black. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dark Royal folks, anything you guys like to do? Um, Zazar will go up to, um, to Hiv. Mm-hmm. Uh, Commander, I have a, a, a question. In the I early might have an answer. The, early in the engagement... There was the ship took damage. We lost one room that wasn't being used. Some quarters. Yes, that is correct. Which quarters was that? Um, one moment. Uh, section Delta Corridor Three. Three. I. That is where I had extra meat stored. <laughs> and you have as, dead, as deadpan as you can simply says, Well, it appears your meat has been frozen. Captain said, No more Jeffrey's tubes. Oh, I speak with a Russian accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's very infectious. Document. It is, you know? Um, but. Uh... That was several months worth of meat. Well, I understand that we are still in good terms with Station. Perhaps we can raid their meat stores before we leave. They don't like it when you take people. Well, that is their problem. <laughs> <laughs> Dominus. I think we might do that. Dominus is as in here, and Krageth and Gars. Meet me in the transporter room, please. And uh, they do so meet you there, I would assume. And he beams in, and there's like a big canister right behind him. And he's like, Zaz, that's for you. Ah. And apparently you have a fan. His name is Today? Tuda? Tuda. Ah, uh, yes. He, uh, apparently he said it's all the jerked meat you can handle. Nah. Hopefully teriyaki. <laughs> I don't look. You can you can you can move that to somewhere else. I can smell it from here. Thank you, sir. Uh, Krageth. 
<laughs> yes, Captain. Good work. Thank you, Captain. Take the next few days off, relax, recover. We'll be fine. But I look forward to reading the report after your recovery. It will be a large amount of damage, but we did obtain victory. Yeah, that's what matters. Hev. Yes, Captain. How has the new ship been performing? Well, the good news, she repairs herself pretty damn well. The bad news, apparently, we're all shit at piloting her. So... Well, we'll get used to the changes. Honestly, I mean, it's a starship. How the hell do you do six directions with just a wheel? Does not make sense. <laughs> Did you try pushing the wheel upwards? It does this? Yeah, I... you just gotta yes. grab and pull on it or push on it and change its direction. Why did no one tell me this earlier? I, I, I thought you I read the thought... manual. There's a it's manual? On... It's on <laughs> your notepad. Right by can, your work... can I... Can Craig just pull the manual out from, like, his back pocket or something? <laughs> yeah, he yeah, grabs the manual and starts reading through and says, Okay, so it's not my fault. I never got a copy of manual. I will go be reading this. And I thought I put a manual on your desk. Well, she scurries off stealing your manual, so... I imagine this conversation is happening as you guys are making your way towards your next adventure through the Transwarp Hub. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, speaking of uh, something we're called, yes. uh, isn't there someone supposed to be showing up? Oh, yes. Uh, so this is going to be an epilogue, um, you know, a week or so afterwards. The station is still in um, shabby uh, repair. Um, and the Dark Royal hasn't gone too far before the station calls it back, saying that there's a Dominion Emissary. No oh, God. Looking to speak to Dominus. Um, Crawford to the Dark Royal. This is a Dark Royal here. There's a Dominion emissary here who wishes to speak with you, Dominus. Oh, I'm sorry, you're breaking up there. Can you repeat that again? There's a Dominion emissary that's here to speak with you. I have. Can you fix the transmission on this? We're not quite getting the signal. The strangest thing, Captain, is if our communications array has spontaneously exploded. Weird question. Can I just hear that conversation? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I look at the captain and, and hold up nice a card. Try. And can hear you. <laughs> but, sir, the nanites aren't repairing anything. Yeah. Fine, put him on. Now, uh, have you named this guy yet? Um, or shall I just come up with one? Uh, he was the one from the DS9 episode. Yeah, I don't know the name. So we'll just... Yeah, so it is obviously a very familiar face to those that recognize... This was the Ferengi, the one that the Ferengi stole from? Is that that one? Yep. Okay. I don't remember his name. Yeah, and he, find it here. yeah, he is obviously not very happy to be here. And uh, Yelgrun. Yelgrun, cool. His name is Yelgrun. I am Yelgrun the Seventh. By order of Founder Odo, I am here to serve as an emissary to a fellow founder go, uh, who identifies the name as Dominus. I look forward to spreading the goodwill of the Dominion. And I am here as an I am here as an apology for the violent acts committed against a founder by other members of the Dominion. The Crusader is an out took his job way too seriously, and does his views and actions do not reflect that of yada yada yada. I'm sorry, Captain. What is yada yada yada? I am not familiar with this phrase. It means that he has a long speech he doesn't want to go through because it's boring. Okay, if you want to be on this vessel, two things. You don't refer to me as founder, or god, or anything in a holy-than-thou title. Yes, fa yes, captain. Good. 
Secondly, you're going to apologize to the command staff of the Cerberus station for all the damage that Crusader, what's his face, better have been decomm decommissioned uh, right away. You're going to apologize to them all and to anyone injured. I have delivered a message from uh, founder Odo, stating precisely that. Oh, no, no. It's going to take us a few days to get back. You're going to apologize to them in person. Captain, uh, I'm looking at engines right now. Could take us a month. Mm. Well, get to it. You got a lot of apologizing to do. Yes, fa yes, Dominus. And as he, as the, ah, as the communication cuts off, you see him turn around, and he begins uh, a fairly long and heartfelt apology to anyone currently in ops. <laughs> <laughs> Dominus just sits in his chair like what's Captain, the most really... vulnerable part of the hull with a room in it uh, that would be I believe section that would be the one delta corridor 3 where the meat was stored. I thought it was corridor 4 it was 3 ah uh, good make his room that it's still open and I haven't completed covering the breach yet, sir. Did I stutter? <laughs> uh, and on that I... note, <laughs> I think it's a good place to end the session. We're coming Yay. up on four hours, and we went through this without a break, and the only people that died are those that the GM had decided should die. So, congratulations on a successful crossover for everyone. Uh, thank you, ELH, for GMing. Mm -hmm. And thank you for Dark Royal folks to uh, for your um, attendance. And just in case people want to hear more of the Dark Royal ELH, when can they see the Dark Royal f games? Well, uh, this coming Sunday we have uh, Session 7, and uh, we are every other Sunday. So it's this week, then we skip a week, then we're back on. And uh, you can catch that either on my YouTube or uh, if you want to catch it live, it's twitch.tv ELHMK1. Thank you so very much for everything, guys. I will, and I will call the session here. So on behalf of myself, on behalf of ELH, and behalf of a combined number of players, thank you all for listening, and we'll, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.